So yeah, uh, yeah. Welcome to the uh, week one stream for the 2023 Opus Magnum tournament. Um, our puzzle this week was self-pressurizing gas, where you're trying to turn this <laughs> single quintessence into this product. Um, I really loved the remark from I think it was Spiritual Shampoo that the real self-pressurizing gas was the community all along. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> This was putting people under some pressure. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of pressure oh, being yeah, put on, on people by, by themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, especially with the Lexi metric, which is the first metric we're going to go over, where uh, you're judged oh. by how quickly you can drop um, the first product, then the second product, then the third product, so on into infinity. Um, someone who mm -hmm. drops the f first product faster than you is better than you uh, in terms of solutions. And if you drop the first product at the same time, then whoever drops the second product faster uh, has a better solution, and so on. It's a uh, latency with a secondary of latency with a tertiary of latency, and so on. <laughs> exactly right. And then you can actually be tied all the way out to infinity. Or as uh, IEEE kept putting it, it is C at I underscore I, and then a computed metric based off of that, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. If you think about cycles Bring for product nerds. I as being C at, at I. Um, but yeah, and then you can be tied out to infinity, in which case ties are broken by area and then cost. Um, and then for the second metric is sum, which is just uh, these numbers added up at the victory screen, cost, cycles, and area. Um, well, you have a sum of seven, Panic. Sum of se Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> very, very, uh, this is optimal sum, by the way. I wonder if anyone got it. <laughs> So let me go and load up the uh, Lexi solutions. All right. And let me find the first actual Lexi solve. Oh, yeah. So um, this one is by Jason. Uh, is it actually an Lexi solve? Uh, well, kind of. You'll see. It's called Gaslighting the Machinery. Kind of. <laughs> so two pipelines I see. Yeah. Arm9 wanted to sue me for giving him the wrong chirality to output. I convinced him that <laughs> this is in fact the right chirality and he should just try harder next time. Until he comes to his senses, he will not get paid and 10 and 11 will output in his place. <laughs> so This is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh one one issue with this is that uh when you're building this product, you kind of want to use the same shape as you see in the dispersion glyph, but um, doing that would put the air where the salt is, so it doesn't really work. This reminds me of that post on Reddit, it's like, how do I get my arms to cooperate with each other? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just fixes it and up it's after just the, the arms just <laughs> <laughs> moving around. It's an entire like silent film. <laughs> but I really like how the arm that holds along. the quint lets go, then grabs again and pivots like, maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mm, 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 mm. there we go. <laughs> but yeah, maybe maybe this is a bit Just cathartic to, to some of you who have been struggling with this problem uh during this week. <laughs> I planned the thing with the right karate at the beginning so I had no issues. It's just that the quintessence glyph dispersion is a bitch. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up is Chrysotep uh, with Lexiographic Cycle 20. So the note on this one, and Cycle 20 on the Lexiographic Cycle solution, I guess it's pretty bad because I waste a lot of time in assembly and transport to the sending area. Let me see if I can open my second screen. Oh, so, is that big? Oh, there goes Biggie. What happened? Biggie disconnected. Oh. Hi, welcome back. Um. So yeah, this uh, this builds the product, but it does take a long time, as it said in the notes. Um, there's actually it's. I was looking at this earlier. It, there's a couple of places where there's sort of an unnecessary pause. Uh, so, like, here, this just sits here for a cycle, where six could swing it over a cycle earlier. Um, and I think, so it, it seems like the initial part is 
pretty optimized for the path it's taking around the output, but there might be some improvements that could be made uh, with this sort of final assembly where it waits a cycle here and then it takes two cycles to bond here, whereas with a multi-bonder you might be able to do it one faster. Um, but yeah, this is... Uh, and you can see how it's 20 because it drops... You wait until cycle 17, 18, 19, 20. That's what the 20 means. Yeah. And then after that, uh, the 22 means that the next time it drops is going to be on cycle 42. So 40, 41, Oh, yeah, 42. I'm trying to say you might want to explain the Lexi notation, or right. are you doing that now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the notation is <clears throat> the first number is the first cycle that the product is dropped on. So in this case, it's uh, 20, so 18, 19 and then drop on 20. You can see the cycles reads out as 20 here. Um, then after that... And anything in the brackets is looped. Right. After that, the numbers are how many cycles between outputs, so you add them together. So 20 plus 22 is 42. And um, yeah, there, it dropped on 42. And plus 22 again. And then next is plus 22 again for 64. Um, and then so on. Right. And uh, as Bis said, the number in brackets means that it's repeating. So it just outputs every 22 cycles um, from there the to infinity. Oh, Biggie's internet is being a dumb. Sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, <laughs> if you want to rejoin at any point, that's cool. But don't worry about it. I mean, he's in the BC, but like, he might not be able to hear us. Oh, I see. We'll see. Um, let's see. What's next? There's some of these that are sums that are showing up in the list, so let me just skip over that. Oh, yeah. Um, Two second sum territory. So the next one is by Topo Mouse. So this one drops four cycles earlier than the previous one uh, on cycle 16. Oh, okay, it's Topo Mouse. Yeah, Topo Mouse is a longtime tournament participant. Um, it's always yeah. nice to see uh, solves from them. Double pipeline. Yeah. Well, kind of. It's so this one it has one uh, dispersion, but it goes yeah into two pipelines. The bottom one seems well, to make yeah two for every one the top one makes. At the speed of uh, one every four, one dispersion is enough. Mm hmm. And this is three every thirteen. <laughs> According to the so with this uh, notation, you can if you add up the numbers oh. in the brackets, uh, that's yeah. seven plus five plus one is thirteen, and there's three numbers, so that's huh. three outputs. So three every thirteen is the rate of this solution. Uh, so it's that's... pulling. <laughs> there's like I guess a that's uh, weird <laughs> cycle where it's not pulling this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, three every twelve would be min rate, but there's a extra cycle. Rate is the average of the bracketed numbers. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's I, I I really like the Lexi notation a lot because it tells you the latency, it tells you the cycles if you add up the first six it's numbers. Got so much information. And yeah, it also tells you the rate. Um, I'm curious how it's coded to like or, like <laughs> oh, decide well, the placement. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's based on the um, throughput code, so basically. Uh, records every time there's a output in the throughput code, and then it just looks ooh. for a repeating pattern and reduces it down as much as it can. Yeah. Um, I believe I have internet again, and I might even be yo, able to... Yo! Nice. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> hey, <Biggie. laughs> Yay! Okay, sorry if all the disconnecting, reconnecting sounds were, like, annoying notifications. <laughs> I, I didn't hear anything I, on It probably on my end. doesn't show up on stream. It kind of gets in uh, streamer mode. Oh, yeah, uh, that's probably what it, yeah. Thanks, Discord, Panic's for that. not in streamer mode. <laughs> Wait, no, I, I think I am. It doesn't show you as purple. Oh. Uh, I don't know how that works. Yeah. Anyways, next up is uh, this solve called I've Got a Bike. You can ride it if you like. It's got a basket, a bell that rings, and things to make it look good. I'd give it to you if I could, but I borrowed it. Thank you, Zorkai. Oh, Zorkai. <laughs> oh. Some. Oh. Why does it say some? <laughs> I see. <laughs> and this 
I see why it's 1462. <laughs> so I thought this was a, a Lexi solve because it drops the first product so quickly, but it seems to be labeled Lexi's as a, a solve solve. <laughs> But yeah, here you can see sort of a very um, direct breakdown of what you need to do to solve the puzzle, which is dispersion, make these bonds, calcify, bond, calcify some more, and then duplicate. Um, Probably not in that order. Yeah. It's the, all the yeah, ingredients are there, but yeah. I strongly disagree with the order of operations being this, but I do agree with everything else happening. <laughs> Yes, but Arum's doing a little dance is very integral to the solution. <laughs> oh, and they're all minus instructions because this is our <laughs> <sighs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's also got a thousand gold exact. That's probably on purpose. Oh, yeah. This is amazing. This, this sure is one of the solves ever, yes. Yes. All pistons. Too bad the pistons Nothing... aren't pivoting. Yeah, I mean, at least they're not swinging. I don't know, are pistons allowed to go on tracks? Is that uh something? I don't know, ask Steven. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah Steven they're allowed here. to go on tracks if they're not moving on the tracks. I see, I see. So this I, I guess it doesn't fully conform to the Steven restrictions, but um Okay. Some more sums I think. Here's one from Petra. There are sums with first output before 14. I suppose that makes sense. Yeah, I yeah. maybe maybe that's spoiling a bit <laughs> yeah. about okay. uh, some some solves, but uh, okay, Petra cat. Yeah. Oh, that's oh the at is pronounced like at. Yeah, because their username used to be Petra cat without oh. the at. <laughs> that's the only reason I know. Okay, so from Petra cat, I, I always thought it was Petra K, and then the at was just like to be fancy, but Petra cat that makes a lot of sense. I always thought it was just Petra in Terabang, and then she changed it. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah. So this is a very um, clean solve. It has a nice just eight uh, tape loop here. Mm -hmm. um, With 11 latency? Yeah, 11 latency. So this is starting to get down to the sort of optimized solutions. Um, it's a little bit off. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a, it's it's a little bit off. There. Right. <laughs> um, so this one, it does the dispersion. It calcifies two of the three things that need to be uh, calcified. It makes a bond between three things, and then it bonds two more things on. Then it duplicates, and then calcifies and duplicates. It's one of the order of operations I considered for mm -hmm. if I ever did a Burlowless pipeline. Right, yeah. So Burlowless is harder because you have to duplicate um, sort of, you have to find a way to get two errors in there despite only having one error as a catalyst, uh, unless, well, we, we'll see some solutions. And that error is a very else. busy atom. <laughs> it's uh, uh, worth noting, yeah. C-Mountain calls out in chat that I think they had a solve that oh. was placed worse than this, but might have been mistaken for some. I see. Ah. Uh, well, we can still load it in. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this one is a uh, another eleven. That I just have it. Basically, I'm looking at the. Uh, I have it showing the sum score, and if the sum looks pretty good, it looks like a sum to me. Or if it's like labeled as sum, or if it's not labeled as anything. But. Uh, yeah, it, we're they're kind of close together. Aren't they? Yeah, it's kind of it, with these metrics. If they're not as optimized. Uh -huh, week zero was pretty easy to tell the difference between um, area and RA solves, but. Here, it's a little bit more difficult to tell the difference. It's sort of just a technical limitation. Yeah, if you miss your solve, tell us. Yeah, definitely. Um, it'll still be scored, even if I don't show it, but definitely be good yeah. to show everyone's score, uh, or show everyone's solve. So yeah, this is a 11.9. Um, so the first one is on 11, then 20, 29, uh, 38, etc. cetera. Um, so this one does dispersion, bonds. So this dispersion and then bond something to the air pattern is going to be very uh, pay attention to this. <laughs> Watch for this in other solves too. Um, then it's going to oh, duplicate. This one uses Burlo. Yeah, this one uses Burlo. Duplicate. So this is like a handoff cycle, kind of. Then it duplicates bonds. Uh, 
responds output. So I would say the thing that's making this one slow is the need to, first of all, the fact that it's sitting on, uh, like all these items are sitting here for a cycle. And also it's doing bonds in like multiple different steps. So it does a bond here and then another bond here and then another bond here. So it's possible to do the bonds in just two steps instead of three. And uh, yeah. also without without that handoff, so. It's uh, it's difficult to get regrabs, uh, to try not to do regrabs when it comes to latency. Right, right, because you have to keep holding on to the atom so you can keep moving it around. Or you have to sneak in a regrab. Mm-hmm. For there's... like atoms that are stationary. Right. And don't need to do stuff. But yeah, and this one is also... One thing becomes very powerful. Right, yeah, if you can hold on to one atom while another one comes in and bonds to it, then you can swipe it away right away on the next cycle uh, mm -hmm. and avoid that re grab. Also, so you were saying? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it's very compact. Um, like, clearly there's oh, yeah. some thought that's been put into the secondary really here. set the secondary as area. Right, right. Um, but yeah, th thanks for pointing that out, uh, Communist Mountain. Sorry for skipping it. <laughs> And yeah, so uh, Matter Monkey is saying whatever category the rank is better, that would be a good idea. Um, the way it works right now is that there's two separate scripts that rank them separately, but it should probably oh, do yeah. that. Just like have the script rank it according to the other scale, and if it's a better rank in that scale, then don't show it. Maybe I, I'll I'll look into doing that for next week. Hmm. Yeah, just skip it if it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just show it in whichever. Unless they've only submitted highest. one solution. Right, but then you can say, well, it's going to be higher in one or the other, so just show it in the list that's higher in. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, Moraconda, if you that's that is true. If you submit a solve that's uh, intended to be Lexi, but places better in some anyway, it might be a little confusing. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I'll, I what I was trying to do is going through all the solves beforehand and trying to like. I have like a list of which ones to skip. Try to figure out everything. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm i not sure if this one was submitted uh, later on or if I just got it wrong, but yeah, sorry about that. Right. So also, did Vicky disconnect again? I should be here. Oh, you're, you're still here. You're just not talking. OK. Yeah, so th this is uh, Petrocat solve again. Um, the same latency for the first output, but further outputs are uh, made more quickly. And it doesn't use Burlo. So this one is like, mm -hmm. for the uh, sort of recipe it's using to make the output, there's less downtime. Like it's doing something every cycle. There's nothing just, just sitting around. And it's doing the optimal thing where it's making bonds uh, uh, twice like that. But because it doesn't have a Burlo, it's hard for it to get the output out. Is this uh, min latency Burlow less? Uh, no. no. You can get a 9 without Burlow. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. You have to use a catalyst, but it's possible because you have an extra input. Oh, uh, right. You need to bind right. the quint. That was, in, that was one of the things. I didn't f uh, fully understand the, huh. the everything about this puzzle uh, when I published it, but that was one thing that I, that I did intend uh, was that the there was two paths to get nine. One of them was sort of easier, where you use two dispersions, um, and you steal a air from the second one. Uh, and then Wait, you can use two dispersions? Yeah. You can uh, put the like one quint into one dispersion, another quint into another dispersion, and then use the third quint as like the one in the output. Oh, the catalyst. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. There are oh. solves that actually do that. Oh, so that's why we have this solve. So I just use the burlo twice. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, next up uh, from Zandorf, breaking right. that six input time. So this one <laughs> has two dispersions. So it uses two pipelines. Gets the first one out on 10, um, then 17, and uh, 24. And then it goes into a loop where it's outputting every seven, one, and then six using the second pipeline. Um, also, now that I know the double dispersion thing, I just hope nobody beats my primary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's enough latency for the first output to be made from the first and third quint. Yes, that's an interesting point. Um, 
There's actually... Right, yeah, you can take the third output, but I assumed I just needed that for the second pipeline uh -huh. on my initial saw. When I uh, first looked at this puzzle, the, one of the first things I noticed is that if you interleave two outputs, you can use the quint one and three for one output and two and four for another output. Yeah, that's also what I noticed. That was like the first so output, I didn't, and then I tried to catalyst. I didn't consider a catalyst in that case. Yeah, I mean, we don't need a catalyst if you have Burrow. The question of whether you need yeah. Burrow in two places, though, when you have two pipelines is the biggest headache. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Except when you have two pipelines, you can't really have a dispersion catalyst, can you? Yeah, when you can, it would just need to steal two cycles from one of your outputs, which then makes it Yeah. Easier. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so this one is a has 10 latency, and it's almost a 9. It's just there's this extra cycle where this bonded pair and these things have to be like rearranged a little bit uh, to make the right bonding shape here. So mm -hmm. this misses one cycle of latency just for that reason. It's sort of unfortunate. But it does also have the second pipeline. Um, I don't know. We'll see. There are. Uh, it's definitely a pattern in some of these solves where there's one pipeline that has low latency but might take a while to reset. And then building a second pipeline is advantageous in that case because it lets you get further outputs out faster. Yeah. The second one can start before the first one finishes. Right. Uh, so here's Guilty Bystander Solve. I can't do cycles and don't enjoy it. Well, thanks for uh, submitting this anyway. Yeah, 10-6 isn't bad. Yeah. I mean, if you wanted to do a cycle solve. Cycles for this is really unfortunate because you just can a whole bunch of pre-building. Yeah, you can, you can do the entire thing from Mr. Dowsing and get six outputs in yeah. two cycles each at the end. Like you talked about how cycles was different, and when I was making my song, and I was like, hmm, how would it be different? I was like, oh, right, pre-building. Yeah, if you got perfect min lexi, your cycle count would be twenty-seven, but min cycles is twenty-six, which is just kind of. Yeah, I'm glad it was the metric it was. Even Lex. Though it brought people to their knees. <laughs> also, that's spoilers for perfect uh, lexi in theory. Yeah, yeah, you have to do some math though to figure out what twenty-seven backs out. <laughs> I mean, all you have to do is compare it to yours. So, <laughs> compare it to your own cycle count. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Has anybody so, got perfect in lexi? Jason in chat saying that theirs would have been a 10 6 as well if it wasn't for the chirality, so they just named instead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this one is. How does this one lose a cycle? I guess it's doing. Does this bond? It calcifies. It spends an extra. It spends an extra cycle duplicating. Ah, uh, yeah. That error in the center could be there a cycle earlier. Mm hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. Right. Oh yeah, duplicating in different cycles. Yeah, yeah. Also, one thing I thought of is Lexi is a uh, Lexi is cycles if you're blissfully unaware of pre-building. <laughs> Yeah, kind of. I mean, there's probably some way you could design a puzzle that is different from cycles, even without pre-building, but... Currently, Surrender Flare is that. Like, it's mm. not even a pre-building. Oh. You want to make the second, fourth, sixth output optimal, but you don't do the same for the first, second, or first, third, fifth. Mm -hmm. So where cycles, you would lag the one, three, five behind. Lexi, it's more optimal to lag two, four, six behind. Mm. Just the same solve, you could reprogram it to get better Lexi. Than the current cycle record. I see. And next up is Zin4 with a solution called Good Enough. This one is 10.5, so it has the same uh, latency for the first product, but then it's able to output further products more quickly um, than the 10.6 solves.
I do like five cycle work loops. They're a rather satisfying motif. Mm -hmm. Ten five. Yeah, the best thing about uh, how... five is the like six arm where you can rotate and then pivot. Although this oh. one doesn't do it, but. I wonder how many people will be stuck on 10 with a rate of uh, 4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 4 is the fastest you can go because you can only, uh, that's like input limited for the disp or the uh, quintessence. So yeah, 5 is faster than 6, but still not the best. So here we have 10-4. Ten, 10-4, four. Ten, four, here we go. <clears throat> is, it, is it possible to get a 10-3-5? Oh, certainly. I don't know about 935, though. I'll get a 10-2 something. Uh-huh. So this one, the note says, I think I got Lin, Min Lexi. Unfortunately, that's not true, but it is close. Yeah. <laughs> Several parts of this are not quite at, like, using only a single dispersion will mean that you're going to be getting the, you're failing the interleave thing, and then also this just happens to lose one latency from probably not planning optimally. Mm-hmm. There's also a bonus meme attached, uh, which I will put in chat. But yeah, this does the optimal duplication at the last cycle, but it doesn't get there quite as fast as you possibly can. Um, and now we see our first nine latency from 42 genius 42. Finally got a layout that worked for latency nine improved following cycles interval to seven, but I imagine with many tracks and loops, it may be possible to lower. Anyway, surely latency eight is impossible. Yo, this is using two dispersions and throwing away stuff. Nice. Right. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where you steal the, one of the errors from, uh, the second quintessence input after dispersing it. So technically you don't need the Brillo here actually, but it means you don't have to worry about duplicating from any atom. You can just duplicate from the Brillo. Yeah, there's no error put onto the giving end of a duplicator. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised we didn't have any 9.8s, but I guess 9.7 and 9.8 differ only in how much Quint they use how often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and here we have a waste chain of water here. Interesting. Also, I love that the Burlo spins six times for no reason. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't ever duplicate not air. It just does a little loopy doop before. <laughs> it's very cute. Genius 42 has good uh, aesthetic principles. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we can see this bond being made between the air and the fire here then both getting calcified on the same cycle, then this bond being made while this duplication happens. And then onto the- People in chat thinking that it's about a collision, but no, that is a very safe rotation against atoms. That's something you uh, use in a few of the other yeah. pipelines. See, no collision. It's the like forwards three, rotate one, oh, wait, I was... one. That will not slow into the forward. I'll stay okay for a moment. When do we get nine latency? <laughs> it happened pretty fast. This is the first fast. nine latency. Yeah. This is the first nine latency. Next up, Raviloli. That's all, folks. Uh, with another nine seven. Let's see if it does the same thing. No, this oh, is. Oh, that previous is... one uses dispersion catalyst, yeah? Right, right. This one doesn't, but... The Burlo Dodge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had one. to use the Burlo Dodge, too. So, yeah, and I guess Ooh. this is the first nine we've seen that is just one pipeline like this, or, like, one dispersion like this, I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can see the, the recipe that you need to do it, or, like, one of the recipes. There are a, a few you can use, but here you make this bond, calcify both of these, then do one of the duplications and uh, calcify the other. Uh, then make the final big bond and duplicate here and then swing onto the output. 
So it's two bonds, three calcifications, two duplications, all done Ooh. within these. Okay, nine three five. That's three, possible with this four. procedure. And then next up, we have another one with uh, an odd one out by Hallow Jasper. So this one <laughs> is using a lot of area. It passes it all the way around here to get to Slightly the Slightly better at seven. Nine, seven, 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 four, three. Right, so the main pipeline is, I guess, outputting every seven, but then this other pipeline comes in uh, and helps it be faster after the one, two, one, three, fifth four, output fifth, yeah. Over the previous. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this and this is an example of what we were saying earlier about how adding another pipeline, if you're not going at maximum rate, um, you can add another pipeline to speed the whole thing up eventually, which will uh -huh. help you beat, like, uh, if you're tied with another solution on that primary, then you will beat it by doing that. Yeah, the cohort is totally insane. We're at number 30, and we're already at mid-latency. I was blown away by how much work everyone put in this week yeah. into this metric. Uh, I mean, oh, oh when my. points are involved, people put in a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The real self-pressurizing gas is community, etc. Et <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's another um, pipeline solve. Now we're getting uh, nine six instead of nine seven. Mm. Well, it's kind of nine six six two four. Yeah. Okay. Notice an interesting this, glyph here. An uh, actual use of the <laughs> unification <laughs> glyph. <laughs> what? <Let me> see. <laughs> I, I don't quite understand. I guess it's easier than moving the quint over to move all the elements <laughs> over and then shove them in. I guess it lets you use an air from this other pipeline that's extra somehow. Oh. Yeah, the air comes from two places. One, I see. One's duped off Burlo, and the other three uh, atoms come from a dispersion. That's just oh, something so that's bizarre. Oh. Unification. <laughs> this is wild. <laughs> Please don't reduce the primaries too quickly. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up is Mr. Puzzle writes. Check out this weird trick for making quints from two waters. Here's one from Irrational Guy, uh, with uh, very long instruction tape. Um, <laughs> it just stops going. <laughs> yeah. So that's why they were talking about. Uh, yeah, they kept. They found something that can be extended arbitrarily. But yeah, the problem is if your second output gap is six, you've already fallen behind the options. <laughs> they just yeah. They said they will program it to forty-two outputs and then crash because you could program it infinitely and. And yeah, there's the crash. What's the part that doesn't work that doesn't make it loop? I'm guessing there's some setup. It just needs to keep passing the water around, which eventually uh, you have to do something differently. And the bottom is only ever used as a catalyst? Yeah, yeah seems so. I see. For the first one. Oh, no, not a catalyst, just straight into the product. And then it keeps on passing water from the side. Yeah, oh, it oh, uses okay. four extra atoms and eventually replaces them with water. But those four extra atoms are only given once. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it only swings and, uh, the quint down to the second pipeline once at the beginning. I guess this you could do this if you like did the thing where tracks can't keep on moving, uh, arms can't keep on moving on a track when they reach the end thing. Maybe, yeah. Well, arm eight is the one doing the initial swing onto the du onto the dispersion. So its job would have to be replaced. Like you would need arm eight and then a piston up above where arm eight is to actually do the job arm eight is doing in steady state. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Arm eight yeah, can do the grab over the empty dispersion and then 
swing back over the input so it never does another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's possible to make a 9-6-4 repeating without doing this, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, very uh, interesting solve. And I guess a 9-6-4 repeating should beat this if it exists. Does uh, it? But it doesn't, unfortunately. <laughs> We're... Yeah. So all, Can all we the... stay at 9-6, please? <laughs> Sorry. No. Let's see every five. <laughs> Uh, by Moraconda, comment is awful area due to the forced hex arms to make every five. Cool. Right, yeah, so the this is another motif you can use at uh, five rate where you have a hex arm on a track and you can rotate the hex arm and then move it on the track. What I love is that this solution, all three of those hex arms are both are taking advantage of both directions on the track before they drop. Mm, yeah, they move oh, back. Yeah. Usually the every five is grab, rotate, slide, drop, slide back. But this also, one is, this is a... interspersing the last two. Also, this one uses the burglar twice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Mara was talking about, like, oh, you can use Burlo only once when she saw some of the ones in the chat, so... Same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is the first I, one I we see that uses I like twice. I think I got a better solve, but... Because, <laughs> yeah, and then again, this means you don't have to duplicate off of any of the atoms on the board. You can just use the Burlo. It's yeah, but it the Burlo is harder to use. <laughs> it allows the air that comes off of the dispersion to sit on top of a nothing glyph, the, the earth side of the dispersion, for yeah. cycle, without ruining five or without ruining nine. Mm -hmm. With the downside of you only have one Burlo and it can only sit in one place. Right. Although you do have this extra flexibility where you can have two different places where the Burlo can do the duplication. Oh yeah, yeah, you can do that, but like, yeah, your options are still limited to like one hex away, uh -huh. or at most uh, a knight's arm away. Um, the next up, we have another nine five, but at a smaller area by Cuckoo fifty two. Um, say a knife, please. Say a knife, five, please. <laughs> <laughs> Comment is day for Cuckoo fifty two, who is no longer undefeated in life cycles. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the comment is not sure if this is good or if everyone else has nine four. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see about the nine four thing. Uh, oh, this one uses the catalyst. I see an empty dispersion that's just sitting there. Oh, interesting. Let's restart this. Yeah, arm one is desynced at some point. You see it grab, rotate, drop, plus rotate. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's taking the air from the second pipeline just for the first one, and then it reuses the water. Wait, is this the same thing Irrational Guys Solve was doing? It's passing but successfully desyncing arm one. Yeah, it's passing water around. Cool. It's duping it off Burlow. This is a rational guy's nine six four, but with a better latency on the second output. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. And looping, right? Because it's able to conditionally do that uh, startup logic. And a pretty good Cartelli too. Ooh, <laughs> too bad it's not completely covered. Um. Uh, number five, we have Dia Diode. Uh, number 25? Or, wait, at, still at five. Uh, yeah, number 25. Still at 9 5. Oh, still at 9 5. Oh, yeah, dreaming yeah. of 9 4. I saw 9 4. I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's too many numbers. Uh, number 25, uh, Dia Diode. Last hour, finally managed to find a 9 cycle. Someone could still find a 9 4, but I think this score will be hard to beat. Definitely didn't expect to find this, but I'm ecstatic that I did. My only regret is that I forgot to shift the quintessence over the Cretelli. Oh. Where's the I Cretelli? am so sorry. 24 people have beat you. Yeah. This is a that, very good uh, solution. Calcifier and duplicator spam right next to the um, multibonder looks very familiar. Mm. Where you can okay. duplicate the air onto something else and then duplicate onto Burlo. I like the swing past the track arms. Oh yeah, here. Yeah. That's very cool. 
Yeah, I saw uh, an earlier version of this solve when I was going over the solves that had 10 latency, and it was so close to being 9. Uh, it was just running into the burlo. Uh, like, there was a way to output it that that would be a 9, but it was just running into the burlo. So another arm had to what? grab it and take it in a different path. So I What don't... limits it to 5 and not 4? Track loops? And the inefficiency? It appears arm 5 is maximally busy. I would say you could probably make that a three arm loop though. And it would yeah, be just like mm -hmm. reduce the loop, well, like increase the loop, and you'll probably be able to get to nine four. Yeah, same with the or seven better. and eight. Because yeah, it seems like the this these two track loops are the ones that are limiting it. But uh, you could probably add more arms. I had a theory for nine three five that came up that uh, ran into issues with my burlo being too slow, mm. but. Uh, which is a weird issue, but. Gosh, yeah. Once you're doing two pipelines to try to get lower than four off of nine. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. not doing two pipelines. I'm doing oh. the same pipeline, but dispersion only takes three. Oh, right. Yeah, true, true, true. I, I also considered that. I considered it would be good. I thought it was not going to work because you couldn't really get through the other atoms. Yeah. <laughs> Quint would I, I, I can't water. speak too much about the elite strategies while I can't see what other people have done. I don't know if I'm like 20th or 5th, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in chat, I, I think that's not great as saying, looks like Quint would collide with water on for loop. So it would swing here instead. Like this would be the swing and it would collide with the water. I think that's right, yeah. Quint crashes at 4, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's not just the track loops then, that makes sense. And the quint does have to be here because of this uh, pathway up here too, so... Uh. But yeah, next up we have the first 9-4. Uh, oh no. From Ebonite. <laughs> no! <laughs> it's got two dispersions. Two pipelines. Something. Uh, so this looks like the uh, intended way to get optimal, where you interleave two outputs. Mm -hmm. But the second pipeline has plus two latency. I see. That's one of the first uh, nine floors I got. But then I was like, wait a minute. Nine four can fit into a single pipeline. Yeah, it would make sense that the first nine fours you would see in this ordering would be the ones with two pipelines, and then you get the yeah, yeah. ones with better area. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, you got so much spoilers. I have a nine four. There's probably people who beat me with a nine three five. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. And this this is yes. this is the Maybe. largest <laughs> this is the largest area uh, nine four. <laughs> But it is a 9-4, which is both um, min latency and max rate. So this is the first solution mm. to have both of those, I th think. Unless there was one that had a pipeline before that had min latency and max rate eventually. But... No, the previous one was 9-5. Right, right. But you could get... Unless you mean like no, you, you, solves you, you... that have been beat. Like one of those like 9-7-7. If, seven, seven. if you made a yeah, make it make solution the way that it could have been, then it would be min latency, max rate. Mm-hmm. You can also do like nine five three, and be worse than this. Right. Yeah. But I don't think we had any of those. At least not in the final list. Next up is Maybe John. John. Nine a trillion, and then repeating four, and it'd still be in latency max rate, which is why flex cycles is different. <laughs> yes. Lexi is hard. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is another um, two pipeline solve. I saw John John in chat a couple of times. Last was uh, my solve is coming up soon, and you will see the mess that I built. <laughs> yeah, the um, thing about these two pipeline solves is either you have to somehow place the burlo somewhere where both pipelines can get them, or you have to do the second pipeline uh, without yeah. a burlo. So there's a little bit of extra latency sort of intrinsic in that. Um, yeah, so the comment is, the second pipeline is sadly two cycles too slow. Lexi is hard, in all caps. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, next up is with a <laughs> 74 area. I love that name. <laughs> um, this one is now just one pipeline. Oh, pipeline. Yeah. And it does this, makes this bond while calcifying these two, then makes the big bond. Just a uh, whole lot of swing space. Two duplications right before the output and then onto the product. Very direct way of doing it. And it is able to clear this area fast enough that it can swing the other quint over to get that um, four cycle loop. 926 is perfect latency using Berlo on both sides. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even get the other side to match in, like enough latency to be a nine three five. Why are you talking about there being two sides to a to a solution? <laughs> I'm just thinking of like, oh, you're you're converging clearly far too late if you have Burlo on both sides. <laughs> yeah. You have to converge well before Burlo is used. Yeah. Next up is Casio. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> with a very interesting track loop here. Uh, the comment is, on exhausting the possibilities for using the glyph of multibonding immediately, I turned to a different order of transformations. By a slim margin and a concentric track, I found this 9-4 design possible. Oh. I discovered some wear upon the harness for the air elemental proxy in my transmutation engine's Van Burlow's wheel after finalizing this design. Such is how close the atoms of the process and the harnessed air elemental proxy come. Signed, Alchemist Kazian, you still not a brick. <laughs> I have to assume this is the same Kazian from the Conway's Game of Life community, who also has a novel, because that's some very flowery writing, and I mm. love it. It must be. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, this this track loop is just so cool. The Kuprite track. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's the same sort of recipe, although this one, it, it bonds the water to the earth instead of the fire, which a lot of other ones do. Um, um, but then it has the same yeah. sort of stuff yeah. after that. Earth to... but air to fire seems easier, right, since cause... they're right next to each other. Right. But I guess earth is the second option. Mm -hmm. It's not really about which one is easier, it's about which one works well with the other options you have. Yeah. Because they're which all one kind actually of connects. Off. Literally, I think my solution bonds one of the airs to water. Mm. And yeah, yeah, if you swing one in the other direction, yeah. And yeah, this one is also interesting because it has this quint just sitting there for like a couple cycles. Yeah, 9 oh, 4 yeah. can do that. Literally, you don't need it. The third right. coin, you're using the second. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is the. Next. Playtex, playtest solve I'm not. by Hexton. Oh, I'm probably still next in placement. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is kind I of interesting. I think Hexton will get a 9-4. Yeah, this one is kind of interesting because it makes, instead of a, a single bond and then a four things bonded, it bonds three and three. Um, this doesn't really make too much of a difference. It just means you can move that quintessence around. Uh, by having it be attached to these other atoms. And it also does the duplication before the big bond instead of after, which is slightly different from most of the solutions we've seen. And then next up, we have in 20th place, this solve says a lot about society by Madmaster. So many people in chat were saying, I have to be next, I have to be next. <laughs> it's like nine fours with mid-60s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the note is, I see you could get faster Lexi cycles. Everybody <laughs> uh, I, I, I see how you could get faster Lexi cycles, but it seriously looks like some Surrender Flare 16 shit. More than one pipeline is unnatural and immoral. <laughs> Good words. <laughs> Madmaster hath spoken. And yeah, this one is also doing the three and three. Uh, or, yeah, three and three. But now with the earth bonded first. 
Next up is Matter Monkey. I'm not next. <laughs> yeah, Matter Monkey also in chat. I actually have to be next. <laughs> the username. Oh, because is. yeah, tertiary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is yeah tertiary. Pretty sure this is min primary. Famous last words. P.S. This is me adding to this note. Several days later, I was a naive fool. I now believe nine eleven six two to be theoretical min. I guess that was the thing that was written first. But it's hellish. I can't even get nine twelve. So this, so I guess, I think eleven was referring to the cycle. Nine two six is the actual way. Uh, oh, oh, I see. I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah, nine two six is theory min. I'll just say that right here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's two pipelines that are both optimal latency. Yeah, interspersed with the dispersion happening on the first and second quint, bonding for the first output for the third quint, bonding for the second output from the fourth quint. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, this one's oh, kind I of... I love this burrow wheel. It's just doing a little dance. It always takes <laughs> air, but it's doing a dance. Mm -hmm. This one's kind of cool because it does the uh, normal bond later than most of the other solves do. Usually also, that's, that's what the Get Up and Go refers to. Oh yeah, look at him go. Communist mountain in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> so Reflex has complete faith someone got a legit 926. Mm. <laughs> Next up is Tulair. Okay. <laughs> Kelly her. Reese is saying what I'm thinking. I convinced myself 926 is impossible, and I still think someone got it. <laughs> <laughs> I can listen to 7935 was impossible. Probably not a good number to settle on. <clears throat> so, yeah, this one seems pretty similar. Peekaboo Cretelli, very nice. Oh, that's a really cute Cretelli. Yeah. Peekaboo. <laughs> Peekaboo. Because, <laughs> yeah, the Brillo has to move out of the way of the swing anyway, so. Might as well put this the This is a there. really clean 9 4. Good job, Tulare. Mm -hmm. And the smallest one we've seen thus far. It gets smaller. Mm -hmm. Next up is Not Great at number 17. Acceptable. At a see. slower rate than I imagined. <laughs> <laughs> Can't the Brillo just rotate? I don't know. Maybe. My secondary optimizations paid off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, here at 9.4, the secondary is key. Uh, there's a note here, Lex key, Lexi can be improved theoretically with two pipelines to 9.26, oh. but I don't see any way to make the geometry work. You're uh, in good company there, not great. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have username void. Pretty happy with this for a 9-4. So now we're back to the air and fire. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Bist is over here sweating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Biggie's like, I have a 935, I am fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just am happy how many people are at 9 4 because it makes my life a little bit less scared. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, here's a uh, 25 gold drop from Mr. Oh Puzzle Solve. Five, oh, God. <laughs> the 25 gold. Some very nice uh, arm movement here. It's synchronized. Wow, this is some, yeah, the arm cluster and the little doggy brillo. Very cool. And it's it bonds on the, the complete other side of, of the cluster. dispersion glyph, and then swings it over at the same time as this uh, as the quint is being swung onto it. Lots of movement, and uh, you're not going to be able to. You have to shift this brillo. You can't just rotate away from that. Yeah. Yeah, can't the brillo just <laughs> rotate? Can, to and the brillo just rotate <laughs> to dodge. Quote. <laughs> I think that was a previous solution, perhaps. Zorflex oh. says, kicking no, myself for not settling for a 9-3-something. You had a 9-3-something and you didn't submit it? 
I think it's just that he didn't spend his effort making that work because he thought 926 was what he needed. I see, I see. Yeah, that's kind of a classic. That That's what happens to me when I, uh, in the past, have participated in tournaments. I'll, like, find the optimal thing and then fail to get it and then just get depressed. And, uh, yeah, that, that is what happens. <laughs> I sent you a 935 two hours after starting the puzzle, and then I got really pissed that we played it. <laughs> yeah, Biggie's, Biggie's first submission had a note that was like, 926 is on the way. And then it just sat there for the whole And it was <laughs> Unfortunately, that... That uh, wasn't the solve the notes that I uh, will read on stream, but judging from what Spiky said, it's a two pipeline nine three five. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so finally a little bit of area drop. We have a two area drop to fast gas by Goodbye Galaxy. Did people overthink this puzzle, or did I underthink it? Uh, I think there was. Oh, this is Axton's build. This is basically Axton's build order. Yeah, Goodbye Galaxy was saying this is hacks and solve, but optimized. Oh yeah, wait, yeah, this it's <laughs> it's doing the exact same bond here, and then yeah, a whole six placements just for a tiny bit of optimizing. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of nine fours. Uh, here's one from from Winter Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Trivial improvement All of right. cost, which Top ten fingers crossed. <laughs> the the cost was indeed the uh, reason this solve ranked higher than the previous solve. Uh, so there's a pretty long note here. First, I like the idea of Lexi, mainly skilled in area optimization. I'm pretty afraid in attempting min cycle before for its complexity. With Lexi, I could first come up with a solve with min latency, ignoring the rate, which is exactly what I did this week. I'm pretty confident with the primary I get unless I miss something very important. The bottleneck of latency in this week's output is the three air atoms. After grabbing a non-air atom, it needs to be calcified, then duplicated, then bonded to turn into a product. Duplication must happen after calcification, and bond can happen anywhere in between. To minimize latency, bonding of each non-air atom can happen only once, which is three operations. This naturally leads to the plan, put the air atom at a two-bond position, whose three ops would be bond twice and duplicate once. The three-bond air would be bonded by tri-bond, and the other duplication could be provided by the wheel which is indeed the recipe that most people used. Um, the remaining problem is how to order the ops to make them possible. The duplication can't happen in the first position. Tribond requires complex maneuvers, so bond must happen in t plus one, where grab is t plus zero. Uh, this puts the core constraint where two of four atoms must move to a bonder in one cycle, and one of the arms must have a path to complete the remaining ops without a regrab. Um, my first attempt is putting tribond in t plus three, which works, but the arm position conflicts. Then tried to put Tribond in T plus two. Um, two unsuccessful layouts where error, error, assault could be made. Um, quintessence kept crashing into things, and this was finally solved in the third layout, which is the one submitted here. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the sliding output uh, seems outputting with any other arm would only increase the area. So yeah, that's a that's Is there a, a word limit on the notes. Uh, <laughs> not at the moment. <laughs> Maybe moment. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. I, I I don't think there's you a longer note. This. <laughs> I don't know that we've mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, I see a lot of people talking about like theories for under nine four. I'm like, I'm interested in seeing all solves. Yeah. So the nine three three six is very interesting. Um, I heard a couple or like a couple people mentioned that in DMs. That, that was a possibility but uh it's yeah. a 935 <laughs> <Definitely. laughs> yes that's exactly what i was thinking of when i said that now <laughs> now we need it now we need the restriction <laughs> the one time in college when i took the entire text of the time cube website and i pasted it into somebody's survey form uh -huh. <laughs> yeah i i guess uh yeah, I should probably skim those notes a little bit more, um, but it's, yeah, it's cool. Make sure you, people can't submit a little bobby tables. <laughs> well, it's just a text file, but uh. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you really wanted to fill my hard drive up with junk, then you, you can. <laughs> Anyways, next up, um, uh, guess who? There, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, slightly smaller area. No seven though. That's solid. Yeah, a nice uh, central Kotali placement. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, oh, and you uh, use Burlo for two different dupes. You've got the yeah. Maraconda misinterpretation. <laughs> yep. Track loops are OP. Yeah, it's true. Uh, so this one also has a note. Um, I made a two pipeline version that ended up as 9.4, so I decided to merge them into one pipeline to save area. Could be beaten by a two pipeline three or 9.3.5 or better, but I couldn't get the geometry for that. It's uh, fair enough. I also figured out after that note that I can make a 9.3.5 in a single pipeline, which would be optimal in area, but it didn't work because my Burlo takes four cycles. Mm. Right, yeah, you need the Burlo for two of the atoms, so it's hard to use it for... Otherwise, I could have unsynced track arms and multiple, like, arms to, like, convey things. That was just theory, though. I never actually did anything because I started thinking about what problems I would run into and Burla was one of them. And that was on the last day, so I couldn't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I ended up drawing art yesterday instead. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Chinese New Year stuff. Sweet. Uh, next up, one area lower is Bambi, with another nine. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, ouch. This one has a cool track loop here where it, the arms swing twice. Not that I think I could save any more area, but ooh. <laughs> mm -hmm. All yeah. my track loops are already as smallest and closest as possible. Yeah, it's very tight in these uh, nine four solves here. Well, that's an unfortunate uh, five, six, seven arm area taken up. Yeah. You can press P here. Yeah. Get all it's, these. Uh, three extra hexes. So it's pretty impressive that it's able Four to extra hexes. place so highly despite that um, having to reset there. Yeah. Uh, next up with one more area shaved off is Sweetle D. Oh. Fast but Ooh. thick. Well, it's not that thick. <laughs> it's uh, number 10. Officially in the top 10 now. Yeah, could have gotten a top 10 with the 9-4. <laughs> yeah. 24th was a 9-4 and 10th is a 9-4. Yeah. Kind of sing the Palip song again. <laughs> Uh, the, an... the output being with a pivot here is really slick. It doesn't mean you have to have calcified that atom earlier, but you can. Oh yeah, that's cool. Definitely saves a lot of area, like compared to calcifying the atom isn't swing. difficult. Yeah. Uh, now another area shave from Newchar. Simple RA couldn't oh. fit in second dispersion. <laughs> this is another pivot output. And it does I this. I like the description of this as simple. I mean, <laughs> there are lots of people for whom this is mind blowing, but yeah, there's a bunch of different standards for the really elite players. Mm -hmm. Simple for Alexi. Uh, <laughs> Just a, a trivial. Tricky optimized for RA. <laughs> trivial top 10 solve here. This is an RA solve. This is an Alexi solve. <laughs> mm. Unless somebody beats this on area again. <laughs> uh, so, next up, wait for it. Nine, three, five. Spiritual shampoo. Yo. <laughs> It, this is lagging the heck out of my machine. Oh, one, oh my god. <laughs> 144 is, oh, p. Oh, okay. It's not a 935. It's, it's, uh, it's 144 p. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and it loops. It loops, yes. <laughs> it's like 935, except it waits two cycles. 37. <laughs> So here's the note. I found a single pipeline 9.4 and deemed it practical min, since the geometric requirements for 9.3 are ridiculous. Unfortunately, a slightly modified version of my 9.4 satisfied the requirements, and I had to see if a matching pipeline existed. I was one collision away from finding a matching pipeline. The atoms were where they needed to be, but the arms weren't. However, I realized that the other pipeline was also min latency, so I changed their output order, and everything worked out. This is what working out looks like? <laughs> quote unquote worked out. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, something's coming up I next. Mean, it works. Uh, Kazan. It's eighth place. <laughs> it's an it's an I three. All right. Mm-hmm. Just like that. How long it? How long does this go? It's still going. Here, let me. I mean, how long click. does that? Does the metric term go? It goes. Uh, how many? I I don't know. I guess you can't see it on the stream, huh? Nope. Well, this was I, I. This is the one that I said in chat in uh, Discord. It was like 145 or something. Uh, I forget which number I said, oh, but that, that that was the song. <laughs> All arbitrary, yeah. long, repeatable instruction. Yeah, seems it like seems that. Like this is just like irrational, guys. It is part of a family of solutions that can be improved by increasing the instruction count to a slightly better min or slightly better Lex C primary. It reminds me of like uh, week six, twenty twenty one. Mad Masters solve for uh, right, where it had like a bunch of pipelines sort of sprouting out. In yeah, it had directions. a bunch of pipelines with increasingly small fractions. <laughs> that was Mad Master. You're that right. He could that he couldn't get to submit the full version All in right. time. Uh, so that was number eight. Uh, now at number seven, we have Pentapig with it a works. 936. Oh, a 936. Oh. So the note here is the last swing of the second output hits the input. I have to delay the first input of the second loop to avoid this, hence the suboptimal rate. Down. Unfortunate. So you can see here, if you watch the, the quint here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It has I, I to just noticed that move like, downwards. that moves out of the way to not collide. Ouch. Yeah. But yeah, and you can kind of see the two pipelines at work here. Mm -hmm. The second one is not so, using the burlo. Nine three without a burlo is yeah. It's you can't do nine two without having the burlo used in both places. So nine three is. Second pipeline burlo listening. Mm -hmm. But even in that case, it could be 935 if there wasn't a geometry issue. So I am I'm very sad at converging pipelines. I'm glad to see Pentapig in the solution list because I did not know enough from Discord interactions to see whether he was just watching from the sidelines or going to participate. Uh, yeah. Rolomni is watching from the sidelines. Sadly, but life takes over sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll see them in uh, later weeks, like if uh, we may perhaps have a rate puzzle. <laughs> uh, next if he up. doesn't participate, he will stay and beat it. Yeah. Oh, I know. Spec 90 already beat him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up from Rebix is. No 926 is big. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> It's Rebex. Oh, but is this is this supposed to look like a uh, what is that guy's name? Mega Mind. Oh god, it is. This is literally the Rebex's <laughs> name. <laughs> oh my god. Amazing. This is incredible. <laughs> it's mirrored, but yeah. <laughs> So yeah, this is another <laughs> no uh, Burlo second pipeline here, but able to okay. run at full rate because it doesn't have the issue with running into the. Uh, it's crashing it, yeah. I want to see if there's anything under nine three five. With the people talking in the chat, there might. Mm -hmm. uh, next up is a relative newcomer. Nova. Yo. With a nine three five. All these new competitive players. Nova Yo-Yo had a really cool week zero showing. This is just continuing yeah. to impress me. They got the burlo list 935 for second pipeline. Mm -hmm. You versus the pipeline you told me not to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> which one's which? And is this... the burlo one the one <laughs> that you have to worry about? I, I would assume so, yes. Even though the left one is the harder one? Hmm. There's much to think on. This arm 11 is pretty cool how it dodges out of the way. Oh yeah, there's a note too. If anyone gets 9-2, they are amazing. Seems you'd have to somehow use the Burlo wheel for both the first and second output, but I don't see how. Yeah. 
Nine three three might be doable by pairing inputs one and three, two and five, four and six, but not with my setup. Also, Nova has only been playing for a few weeks. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. When the week zero results were out, Nova shared in chat that they got the game three weeks prior to week zero, and they were addicted. Damn. <laughs> they were also incredibly good. <laughs> they That's... are. Holy shit! That is ridiculous. <laughs> So I'm excited to see what Nova would come up with after the like as the tournament goes on. Mm -hmm. Might even like be winner material. <laughs> Could be. So now we're down to secondaries again with a four area shave by Caluresis. I'm surprised. I guess it's not surprising in the sense that. Um, you will see the higher area solves before the lower area solves. But a pipeline that uses Burlo in two places is very, or not two places, but a pipeline where both use Burlo is very achievable for 935. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to plan out, but once you realize one specific no. delivery mechanism, it just works. Yeah, I am awful at uh, pipeline converging, so not my kind of thing. I just do a single pipeline and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. This one is moving the quint quite far to get to this uh, tribonder on the left here. Also, communist mountain in shambles again. <laughs> Burlo. Burlo spin is done naturally by most players. Yes, <laughs> it's only natural. It's just a very empty Burlo instruction tape. You just want to <laughs> fill it up. <laughs> oh yeah, Fiesta is the other one who's left. So it's Rekt, Fiesta, and me in the top three, and the question is, which order? And oh yeah, the note, I built a lot of min latency pipelines before finally finding one that can fit a second 10 latency pipeline. Apparently this is my 82nd solution file. Oh my god. <laughs> god. <laughs> I think this is practical min lex C, but area could get much lower if someone finds a single pipeline with a three cycle repeat. Hmm. I am curious also if thinking about min lex C. Not, not very, getting... but not... Oh, sorry. Yeah, theory is 2-6, but uh achieved min lexi mm -hmm. next up in number three we have spec 98 i hate geometry same in chat was saying that they found a, a fail 926 very similar to my own mm. uh, oh yeah this looks just like so many solutions i submitted yeah not submitted built so yeah this is using the burlo for both uh, as wiggy was mentioning earlier Ooh. yeah if you do uh, if you do Burlo after the Tribonder, and the Tribonder is arm slides onto it with the Quint, then you can get the Burlo in both pipelines. It just has to converge at the Tribonder, which is now even more tight. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see where it loses a cycle in this sort of rearrangement thing that's going on here. This just looks so clean, though. Yeah, and then this loses a cycle, too. Here. And then here, well, it, it uses the extra cycle of latency afforded by the 935 target. I, I guess because it's a compromise saw, it can look very clean, but wow. And next up, so congrats on uh, third place spec 98. Next up, we have Nice at 69 area by Fiesta. Damn, I really did congrats, win. Lady. That's insane. <laughs> That's yeah, congrats. <laughs> so yeah, this is a similar situation with the Burl used twice. There's a another note which I will read here. Finding this solve was a major slog. I never seriously thought that a 926 layout existed, but very much wanted to find 935, min latency, min rate, and ideal plus one latency. Uh, first I narrowed the space, I chose the recipe that multi-bonds before duplication. I also opted to consider only algorithms that deliver the product by grabbing the quintessence. Um, made the challenge yeah, seem more manageable. Yeah, has a bunch of latency you can <laughs> play with. Uh, with this strategy, I started looking for every nine latency solve with a quint input one move from the multibonder. With three days of work, I found five layouts. Turn, turning, tuning one of them to min, min rate got me from my stake in the ground of 9.8 down to 9.4. Uh, with a decent solve in hand, I pursued two options for achieving 9.3.5. First, I explored whether any of the nines could run their single dispersion glyph at max speed. 
Uh, next, I explored which of the input-output locations could support 10 latency pipelines. There were quite a few of these. Um, but it suggested to me which input locations would be most promising to explore more deeply. Two days of stitching together the likeliest nines with the most agreeably shaped tens got me a pair of dual pipe machines capable of 936. Both had geometry issues. Uh, I might have said happy with this, but the better of the two was just so close. Ultimately, though, it was not poking at that so close machine that broke through. It was when I gave up on the last day and started working with the nine machine that it initially looked least promising. Its available workspace was the tightest of the candidates, but the geometry just worked out to remit a 10 latency pipe, so it happened that that pair could run at min rate. Success. 935 achieved with 18 hours to deadline. Congrats, Fiesta, on uh, second place. That yes, really is the really, best one in the layout. I, I think I've really enjoyed watching Fiesta's progress during the weeklies, and I'm excited how the tournament goes for them. Second place is really solid. Yeah, definitely, especially with how much work everyone has put into this metric. <laughs> it's a very good showing. And finally, first place. Biggie Mac 42. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, that area is 68. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, it's <laughs> minus one area from Fiesta. Very, very, very close. GG, Fiesta says in the chat. Uh, the note is throwing in the towel. I don't think 92x exists in any form that I considered. My showcase solution is 926, which is min, but uses one overlap hex, so it's not valid. I had a 935 very oh. much like this one on day one, <laughs> and after finally giving up on min, I went back to it and tightened up the area secondary. Yeah, the only reason that this can't be 926 is the bonder at the bottom, where I cannot put any atom onto that lower bonder tile in one cycle. I need two cycles. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. And given that I could waste that cycle, I then got a little more area compact with delivering the other two atoms from that dispersion. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's just that's the one showstopper is that I just can't put bonders in the right orientation. And yeah, also request from chat and from me. Can we see the nine two six showcase? Oh yeah, um, right away. Yeah, we're at the end. Let's see. Yeah, because this is first place, so I can just close this and then bring up the showcase. And then load in non-conforming catharsis. So here you can see there's this one it's overlap rotated. here. Ah, uh, it's actually a different uh, pair of pipelines. Not, neither of them is the same as the one in the uh, submission that won. But yeah, this is nine two six. Just one G. This is pre-optimization, I assume. Uh, yeah, you can improve it by a single area by moving the uh, rotate arm underneath the fake bonder into a tracked arm to the right. But it's it's so close to possible. I spent dozens of hours enumerating all of the layouts that could get you onto the tri bonder in time, uh, and this is the only one that was close. Still first place. <laughs> Yeah, I was hoping that this showcase would be relevant and that it wouldn't be like, yeah, three other people got 926. Your showcase is just that <laughs> issue. No, if no one got it, then this showcase still makes me happy. Mm -hmm. So close. It's, it feels like surrender fire. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, I don't know if it's good or bad that 926 felt so close, but not actually achievable just because of how much uh, every, time everyone seems to have spent trying to find one. Uh, it seems like a lot of people mostly gave up on 926 <laughs> instead of on 935. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and since the 935 already got them pretty high, top 10, yeah. Yeah, I am kind of curious if the 933 meme is possible. 9336? It didn't seem like anyone tried too hard on that one. How, how is 9336 possible? Is it like three pipelines? Yeah, yeah, three pipelines, and you have the second output with the fifth quint instead of the fourth. Ugh. <laughs> oh, Spec tried it for a long time. But any any thoughts on how possible it is? Doesn't seem very possible. Oh, with two pipelines, every six and every twelve. Huh. I misunderstood. Then I see. 
Spect has clearly thought about it more than me, so I'm not going to try to confidently say yeah. that more. Mm -hmm. Seemed more difficult seemed than 926. Seemed more difficult than 926, yeah, sounds yeah. like it. Because, yeah, 926, 926 is just is two a things. geometry issue. Mm -hmm. 9336 is replanning everything. All right, well... well just to clarify, because RPO thought that there was a bonder on top of the calcifier in this solution. There isn't. Every step that is being done happens independent of every other step. It's not cheating latency that way. It's just cheating geometry. I could also achieve a 926 with a piston that extended from length one to length three in a single cycle. Hmm. Geometry is a bitch. <laughs> well put. Euclid Y. All right, well, that one short called The Expert, where they're asking a man to draw seven lines all strictly perpendicular. He's like, What's stopping you from doing that? Geometry. Just ignore <laughs> it. <laughs> Just uh, get on that hyperbolic plane. Just uh, ascend to the seventh dimension. Okay, well, congrats to uh, Spect, Fiesta, and Biggie Mac for top three. Um, and uh, Tweedledee, Newchar, Spiritual Shampoo, Pentapig, Rebix, Nova, and Calurisis for top 10. Congratulations. And now we will move on tact. <laughs> to the second metric sum. Uh, hold on. Oh boy. Did you get comfortable about your sum solve? <laughs> so we will start with a solution from Matt. Giving it a name makes it real. So the challenge with sum is, uh, I guess, to change gears a bit from Lexi to make a more balanced sort of solve. Um, typically, cost and cycles should be within 2x of each other. And then you can tweak area to make it smaller. What's the secondaries for uh, sum? There are no secondaries. So we may see some ties. There are no secondaries. OK. I know uh, instructions is sometimes popular as a secondary for tournaments, but I don't really like the way it encourages uh, solves to not loop. Might as well just do sub four. Right. And the truth is there aren't that many ties. There are a couple, but... Um, yeah, when it comes to some, yeah. There's enough uh, degrees of freedom that it's not too big a deal. But yeah, uh -huh. this is a, a nice simple solve. I guess the where it falls down is the number of cycles that it uses. So it kind of feels a little bit like an area solve where it's moving a bunch of atoms around. Um, oh yeah, kinda. Uh, between different arms and doing a lot of these shifts and sort of things. Uh, so it ends up using quite a bit of cycles to complete the product. Um, and the cost is pretty low. It's only using three arms. And mm, yeah, if you can. there's, Go it's like bro. the minimum glyphs, I think. So you just have your calcifier, dupl duplicator, bonder, and uh, dispersion. Well, yeah. Does Burlo count, Unless you count Burlo as one? Yeah. Yeah, I guess I, I don't think you count Burlo as a glyph because it's in it's in mechanisms, I mean, right? The way Burlo is used here, it feels like a glyph. It's it's not in the glyph section. It's in mechanism. But the way it's used. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Burlo uh, for these sum solves too. Whether or not to use Burlo is obviously a concern because that's thirty whole cost, and if it's not yeah. saving you thirty cycles uh, to use the Burlo rather than duplicating off of a, an error. It's the same dilemma as vaporize per bed. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up is Ravaloli. That's all, folks. Wait, I think this is Alexi. Did looks we like already see this? Thing. Yeah. I don't think we've seen it, but uh, it looks. Oh, yeah, like I was going to say, they use the same title for both of their submissions. No, it's just this. <laughs> oh, it's just the same solve? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, then we have one from Redstone Paradox. Oh, oh, nice. That's a name that's been in the Discord a bunch. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so this one has quite a few arms. Uh, New solution for? Ten arms. Uh, so the, this one has a note. Started with a 16, 8, 71, 35 solution, some 512, then shaved off a ton of area. Uh, I believe that I'm near a minimum, as it doesn't seem possible to reduce cycles gold or area any further. Um, and I think... It might be Pareto. Yeah, with this number of arms, it is definitely difficult 
Um, because all these arms are kind of doing important things. Uh, and the fact that they're length one means that they can't do multiple things as easily. They're just constrained to the their immediate neighborhoods. Yeah. Roll of thumb for some uh, area, uh, not area, cycles is about the same ballpark as cost. Right, yeah, and this one is definitely heavier on the cost. The previous one was heavier on the cycles. This one, with all its arms, multiple bonders, uh, multiple duplications, and so on, is a little heavier on the cost. Um, so I think if for a more optimized sum, it might be worth like thinking about, is there a way to do the same sorts of things with fewer arms and fewer glyphs? Uh, maybe giving up some cycles in the process. Uh, next up is Svenja with a sum of 485. This one is kind of cool. It's got six arms. And <clears throat> one thing with this one, though, is arm five, all it's doing is a pivot. Oh. That feels like the most glaring thing to look at to me. Um, if there's some yeah. way to replace what arm five is doing with something that another arm could do. Problem is there's there's just these hex arms nearby, so you'd probably have to change the layout somehow to get another arm over here, maybe moving this top part over to the right or something. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, this one's definitely heavier on the cost than the cycles, especially with the use of these uh, pistons. All right. Uh, next up is Zin4. Factor is usually less than phi. Yeah, that's a that's a thing that's interesting. Less the average phi, ratio yeah. between cost and cycles for sum solves is phi. Yeah, didn't someone go through like all the sum solves and found that that was kind of true? Phi golden ratio. <laughs> Mara, what's phi? Two, basically. <laughs> basically, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who cares about floats? We're all using integers here. It's yeah, it's it's pi minus one, where pi is equal to three. But yeah, so this one, um, very fast solve at fifty-five cycles. It seems like it was derived from a um, Lexi solve because it says fifteen latency, four four eight. Oh yeah. So. <clears throat> It is fast and low latency, but it has a lot of arms, a lot of tracks, um, multiple duplication glyphs, no Brillo, which is uh, good, but... Oh, it's closer to 1.5 now? Yeah, it's still a good... Phi is easier to remember. <laughs> Here's another sum solution. <laughs> Look at that horse doing a backslip. <laughs> yeah, because of one Reddit post from Zorflax years ago, uh, he just changed this post. Haha, uh -huh, horse equals god. Haha, <laughs> uh -huh, horse equals god, yes. <laughs> But yeah, this one from 7T two Storm. Uh, only two arms. Yeah, this one is pr pretty cool, actually, because yeah, it's only two arms. It has, does have two uh, duplication glyphs, but it's able to complete the task in two arms, and they're able to trade off between each other pretty effectively. There isn't too much blank oh, space in either of them. Pretty, uh, the tape loops are pretty cool, yeah. Mm -hmm. The but, empty parts are covered by chat and uh, the stream, but yeah. Oh, yeah. You can see them here. And yeah, I guess the main downside of this is just how many cycles it takes and also the fact that there are pistons. So pistons, you could fit four arms, uh, like normal arms in here, or like um, some combination of normal arms and uh, multi-arms, <clears throat> which may be able to do a better job with the same cost in terms of cycles. But as it goes, this is uh, quite good for two-arm solve. I would say. There's a lot of deceptive cost in the duplication glyphs. They cost the same as a fixed arm, which is always... Right, yeah. Like Maybe there would be a way to use um, the same duplication glyph twice instead of using both glyphs. Duplication glyph is expensive. Yeah. My last pretty significant sum improvement was getting rid of the second duplicator in myself. The previous one had been titled Agonizing Over the Second Dupe. Mm. Mm -hmm. I had one dupe throughout because I would not be satisfied with having two. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Petrocat. Um, 
some I guess? Like my old sum solution, but cutting out some tracks I still had in there for some reason. So this one has six arms um, and manages to get a pretty decent cycle count of 72, but the fact that there's so many arms is uh, means that the cost is quite high. And also there's a lot of empty space in the tape loop. Basically arm two is setting the pace for everything else. Lots of swing space too. Yeah, so yeah, the area doesn't isn't helping anything either, but uh, I do wonder if this could be a length two arm. I don't know. Uh, next up, Chrysotep, four twenty nine. I couldn't do better than 429. I have a solution with an area of 32 instead of 35, but with two telescopic arms instead of two normal oh. arms. So yeah, that would That's definitely arms. increase the cost. Seems um, some is a bit more difficult for new players. Yeah, well, it's kind of hard to know where to start, I feel. like. Yeah, unless you've been in the community for long enough. <laughs> right, like, we have all these sort of rules of thumb, like, oh yeah, keep costs and cycles balanced, like, keep arms busy. Uh, all this stuff. Um, one thing about this solve though not is not really intuitive stuff, just stuff from experience. There's these reset instructions, um, which actually <laughs> pad out the length of the solve, so you can move these back, um, probably. Yeah. And make it slightly faster. I don't think anything. Hey, yeah. Have you ever heard of the period override instruction? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've I've seen I have seen sometimes new players doing this where they line up all the reset instructions at the end like this. Um, yeah, that's uh that's what the period override is for. Right, like yeah, you, if if you want to increase the period, you can place this period override instruction, this X instruction, um, which increases. It the doesn't period. count toward instruction uh, metric, which is uh, a thing to keep in mind for the ongoing week. Yeah, although this um, doesn't count either if it's not doing anything. Expands yeah. to nothing. Oh yeah, fair. Yeah. But yeah, it's and uh, some of these, yeah, if they're not doing anything, you can also just remove it. So yeah, just I guess a tip about reset instructions for this one. Oh, so what's actually hate this though? Oh, Miss Cretelli. <laughs> yeah, I guess if, while we're tinkering, we can also put the Cretelli here. Although I don't know, it's I, I feel like <laughs> sometimes these central Cretellis are a little bit too obvious. Like let's let's run the solution a little bit and see. If there's a if there's a more refined place to like see here, there's this is <laughs> where uh, bad feng shui. <laughs> like a uh, uh, Adam rests here or like moves across this one, so maybe a Critelli would be better here. I don't know. Next Give up the is a kiss. <laughs> panic. That's worse. I don't know. I think uh, I think in some ways it's better. I think uh... very anti Critelli. The hole is actually good Cretelli because nothing covers it, but that's boring, right? Like you have to use your Cretelli to to uh, mark something that's that's interesting, not just something that's boring. <clears throat> anyway, next up is a sum of four twenty three by Jason. Um, this one is relatively balanced. Uh, with two twenty five gold and one fifty two cycles, ended up following at least one of Goodbye Galaxy's sum tips, making hex arms look overrated. Nice. Oh, that's a beautiful self assessment. <laughs> I oh, do yeah. like the use of an air catalyst. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it just leaves it there and then duplicates Six. everything oh, off yeah. of it. And then it just yeah it keeps sitting there. That's so th probably something we'll see later on. Mm -hmm. It makes the construction very smooth as it moves past this. Yeah, I guess this one looks good in a lot of ways, um, but I yeah, it's got a lot of good concepts. Yeah, it's we're questioning pivot of the week on that by arm pivoting the input and the the two airs. Let's see, yeah, by arms. I also like by arms. Very stylish. Oh. Forty second was nearly four twenty. True. <laughs> oh yeah, Zorflex, pay attention. Got to get the pivot of the week. Uh, next up is a rational guy. Some mostly cost. Uh, 
So yeah, this is another two arm yeah, solve. It's pretty cheap. And it's just using one piston this time. So yeah, it has one arm which is doing a bunch of the work, and then there's this piston that is able to access everything. Seems like pistons are mostly bad for some. Right, yeah. They're way too expensive for the amount of things they can do. They're not fast enough, and they're also way too expensive. Right, generally you prefer have... track with normal arms, especially because you can share yeah. the same track with multiple arms. Their use is uh, having a lots of access points in a small area. Mm -hmm. Which is accomplished here. Although it is swinging it a lot, so there's a bunch of area that's sort of invisible here. Uh, yeah. Which is counted as part of the sum. So pistons are OP in area, but not so much in sum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the amount of area that it takes to take where it is on the bonder and turn it into the right calcif calcified and aerified stick might cost more than another glyph. Mm -hmm. Next up is Madmaster with 402. Hmm. <laughs> this one is this very fast. Like, it just looks like a slow Lexi. Yeah. It's even got the Burlo rotating to avoid the collision there. Oh, two dupes. Right, yeah, two duplications and a Burlo. And a Tens lot of. Tens will be a hundred. <laughs> Got down. <laughs> Tens will be a hundred. Yeah, probably. No, what ten is? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is a summified version of my first Lexi attempt. That makes sense. Next up is Tapa Mouse Unburlo or Unburlo? I'm not sure. Ooh. This is the first. Uh, Wait, how do you see that earlier, Rebex? Sub 400. <laughs> how do you see that before I did, Rebex? I, Rebex I, just I, wanted to make a, a point and it happened to come out. Almost <laughs> <through>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. <laughs> it actually is just 390 down. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. The, these hex arms that are adjacent to the dispersion glyph are pretty good in some, and uh, we'll probably be seeing more of that. Uh, Fingers crossed we start getting pileups. Well, yeah, this one, minus one at 390. Hell yeah, pileups. It's the Wiggles. And the uh, comment on this is improvement. So yeah, this is four arms, uh, one of them being a piston. Though, it kind of feels like you might be able to do something with track that makes it so it doesn't have to be a piston, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, a lot of track. So all that combined makes the cost pretty high, but the cycles are relatively low, which uh, lets this one place well compared to the previous ones. And yeah, only one duplication as well, which helps. Oh, nice. I kind of like how this arm three delivers these two right onto the bonder like that. It's always satisfying. Yeah, if your initial you air is at one of the edges and not the center air atom, you can just use one dupe mm -hmm. pretty easily. All oh, right, because it's like moving the airness. Sort of like just the... passing the air on. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, that is pretty slick. I like this song. It's a nice song. Yeah, nice job. Nice and simple. Next up is Jay Gark with a 386 song. Oh wow, look at this. <laughs> They're all just moving down on the track like that. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's smooth. <laughs> this looks like it would do well on the reddits. Yeah, just very visually <laughs> pleasing. And it's just using water. You could call it a waterfall. <laughs> it's cool how I this I really like this. So the the air sits here 
and then duplicates this, and then it waits and duplicates that, and then they all swing to make this shape, and then this swings. Like a very nice bonding pattern, or like a uh, construction pattern. And then this Very one smooth. comes along the outside. It's kind of a uh, shame that this track is necessary. Maybe there's a way that you could lay it out so that it's not, I'm not sure. But, but yeah, definitely very smooth construction. I think all the track makes the cost higher than uh, some of the upcoming solves, but... Six art is quite a lot for some as well. Right, right. Definitely looks very smooth. Unless you're building a very complex shape. Mm-hmm. Next up, a playtest solve from Gecko. Uh, I Ooh, kept, nice. kept having geometry issues. I figured a hex arm like this would be good, so I supplemented it with two arms on a small track loop, hoping for a good outcome. So yeah, more hex arm fun with two arms on a track. It does have matched cycles and costs, which is a good thing. Oh yeah, it's perfectly matched, cycles and costs. Oh. <laughs> And honestly, a lot, in a lot of ways, this feels like a good sum. I think the the main thing would be like arm two is not really doing anything most of the time would be the main downside. But if I got this as a sum, I would probably be like, yeah, this is a pretty good sum. Oh, there's two bonders and two calcifiers. Yeah, two bonders, two ah. calcifiers. But still. Oh, and it's uh, we're th 370 at number 37. It's back to the pattern. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess this is technically number 37. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, pretty incredible that this is number thirty-seven for how nice it looks as like a sum solve. I, I feel. Oh yeah, thirty-seven. Yeah. Damn. Um. Next up at number thirty-six, three sixty-seven from RPO. It's a sum. Yup. You can We're definitely add those the three numbers together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, a lot of track here. Pretty decent use of arms. Arm 3 has some gap. And there's a multi-bonder, which makes it more expensive. But it's pretty balanced. Lots of track. It's got a lot of track. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's the challenge here with some is definitely being able to access everything on the dispersion and then also getting everything into place to build the output. <laughs> But dispersion is kind of annoying to use in some just in general because of the fact that the shape of it is so hard to access with just a simple arm. Okay. So you end up Nobody's either used disposable. use a bunch of tracks or uh, like a bunch of X arms or something. Uh, next up is Kazian with 362, number 35. <clears throat> the note is, this metric of optimization is unfamiliar to me, and I lack intuition for it. The device is permitted to sprawl, and cycles seem inexpensive, but to focus on cost is to balloon one cycle budget like a stabilized air leak. I am much more fond of my design made for alacrity. Alchemist Kazian, you still not a brick. I just love the writing style of mm -hmm. John Kazian. <laughs> it's, it's fun to read on stream, too. Thank you. Hey, Kazian, can I... Uh... Commissioning you for a future tournament, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, as for the solve, there are a lot of pistons. Um, that's what I would say first about it. Arm 2 doesn't even piston. There's 20 free points replacing it with a regular Wait, arm. wait. <laughs> You're right. That, that would probably be a significant change, too. Wait, yeah, why are you a piston on? <laughs> In chat, they're saying totally blundered piston, too. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, 20 would have been a lot. 20 would have, uh, according to chat, brought you two placements. Mm. <laughs> right, because of the 10 rule. Mm -hmm. That can't hold forever. I don't think it goes under. It, it definitely <laughs> cannot. We are not having 10 sum for first place. Yeah, it definitely, the increments start to get very small. Uh, next up is Cuckoo52 with four sum less, with a low cost style sum. Min glyphs for real. No burlo.
So I guess this is... They'll probably start the Opala. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this, I guess, compared to the two Piston Solve, um, is way cheaper. Uh -huh. And even with these track, it's uh, still 10G cheaper than having two Pistons. And now we have a little bit more significant drop of 16 to Cadspin. Clean Owo. Yeah, it's so yeah. just saying hot take, still wild wave on the pile up. Yeah, I think it'll be about like around 300 as the pile up. Hmm. I remember Kat's been saying that this was her solution title, Clean Owo, because it's clean and she's a cat. <laughs> it, it, it just makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, I like how the duplication happens here. Um, sort of going yeah. down the atom like that. It is kind of a shame that you need two duplication glyphs to make it work with that Ooh, geometry, yeah. but it definitely looks clean. And I guess that is the main thing that could be improved about this is the cost with five arms and two duplications, two bonders, all this stuff. But very solid solve. Next up is Xandorf. Oh, damn, we're getting close. <laughs> very cool triarm on a tri track here. Mm -hmm. And a, a multi bonder, lots of three things. Yeah, that's the thing uh, Kazian is saying in chat. Lexi has a clear goal, whereas Sum is more like, hmm, like, I don't know. Is this good? Is this Slide, not good? You know? <laughs> and it can kind of be hard to tell where you place man. too with some. Yeah, I think the dozens of hours I put into Lexi at most improved me two places because my first submission would have already been third, but I'm worried I'm going to be like 20th in some. I spent one day on it because I wanted to spend all of my time on Lexi. Mm hmm. I did a sum solve, I never optimized it much past that. Never did any Pareto searching. Mm -hmm. Next up, a drop of one, Tweedledee. Oh, pile, up, pile up, pile up, pile up, pile up. This one, six arms. These are all fast, but quite expensive. But yeah. I'm impressed that they are lowish 300s for that balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of wonder if people were taking their like Lexi thoughts and applying them to some or like starting with Lexi solves and optimizing them or that sort of thing. I started with some since it felt like the easier metric that I don't have to put that much brain power into. Uh-huh. Now a drop of two to Hallow Jasper. Better some. Yes, keep it coming. <laughs> This is a cool Jesus sort of motif time. where it makes uh, like all three of the bonds here with this one bonder by rotating around a uh, hex arm, which is also used to pull elements off of the dispersion. Yeah, my solve does that exact thing with a bonder with all the bonds. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that looks very really efficient. And yeah, I guess arm two is kind of sad here. It's only doing one thing. It's kind of the dispersion you often end up with these arms that are just sort of like, well, there's no other way for me to reach this atom here, so I just need an arm that swings it. So it like is probably very far ahead, because he was like, unexpected pile up. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's a drop of one more to uh, die a diode. Keep it coming, keep it coming. <laughs> this one has a note. Uh, Hello, I'm Daya Diode. I've been meaning to join a Zactronics tournament for about seven years now, but either I found out about them wow. a week or two after they ended, or I had too many other things going on to justify the time. This uh -huh. year, I happened to check Discord the day week zero ended, so now I'm here. There's definitely room to shave welcome off... To the tournament. Yeah, welcome. Uh, there's definitely room to shave off some cycles here, but I spent most of my time on lexographic cycles, and so didn't feel like revisiting this one. Well, this is a pretty solid solve. Um, a lot of regulars... Or like several regulars have scored lower than this, so uh, 
congrats and welcome to the tournament. Zorflex didn't submit for some. Oh, Zorflex didn't submit at all. Huh. Also, self-assessment is that there's some with mid, but uh, yeah. I think yeah. probably that's going to be around where my number was after I figured like, okay, this is good. I, want, I still want to hear about your number after the stream. <laughs> Or flex and shambles. Mm -hmm. So here's a job of also, four. Also, you don't just keep submitting to the website like constantly throughout the week. Some mountain final for real. Mm -hmm. This one also does the bonding with the hex arm like that, but then it also uses the same bonder after pivoting to make mm -hmm. the final bond. And yeah, relatively balanced, uh, pretty cheap for a, especially for a five arm solve. Kind of boring Cretelli. <laughs> totally cromulent Cretelli. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now we have a drop of five to Kevlar. Keep them drops nice and small. This has that similar motif where it's swinging this uh, bonded two pair over the bonder to make these two bonds. Oh, double calcifier. Hmm, triple calcifier. Or no, wait, that's a, that's a duplicator. Of he gallops into its front leg. Of course he gallops into its front leg. Mine gallops into its back leg. <laughs> And yeah, this one has five arms as well. And now we have a drop of one to Andrej K. You're not next. <laughs> Davis42 uh, has not shown up, even though he said he's next. <laughs> very, uh, very close numbers here, yeah. I like the way that arm three just barely dodges. Um, the quintessence coming through, and then the salt on the other side. Arm five oh. does that pivot that allows arm three to move within the molecule as it's pivoting. No disposal. I guess we haven't seen very much disposal in the sums. My first oh, sum attempt, like disposal, but it was also like three eighty. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, what's your initial sum? Awesome. Mine? Yeah. It was that one with disposal. I think 386. Uh, if I remember right. My first one that I finished was like around 300 flat. Jeez, that was my good one. You probably beat me. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, my initial test solve for some was somewhere in the 300s. I don't remember. But. Definitely, these are getting to be good. Mm hmm. I set myself at like 330 is a decent sum, and then I got quite, quite a bit under that. And I thought, okay. Yeah. yeah. We're working at 324, and we're 26th place. Okay, well, 42 genes, 42 is right. He is next. <laughs> keep him coming, keep him coming. Lots of very small drops. No hex arm Just here. Just in general. Just three arms on track. And arm two does have to do a regrab there, which uh, makes it a little less smooth than it could be, perhaps. But it's definitely balanced in terms of cost and cycles. Mm -hmm. Zorflex, yeah, my assessment was anything under cool. 280 is good. Wow. Any holy shit. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I got close enough to 300 to stop it. Under 300. Uh -huh. What was your mid solve? <laughs> well, for now, we're dropping by four to Matter Monkey. Um, drop for tingles. Give me some. Give me some ties. <laughs> <laughs> give me some more of those ties and when they did see drops, please. 
Yeah, it's actually kind of surprising how few ties there were, considering how small these uh, drops are. How few? That assumes there's more than one, <laughs> at least one, and we haven't seen any, so fingers <laughs> crossed. <laughs> True. It's also cool just how many different techniques there are, like the um, lots of arms ones, the lots of, or like hex arms that aren't moving on a track. This one has a hex arm that is moving on a track. Ah, uh, Zoroflex mid salt is 303. Okay. This one is able to use this multi bonder um, to do things quite quickly. Bonds everything on here. Just like a few cycles. Three cycles, yeah. So reflexing mid is 303 is giving me hope. Mm. Uh, next up is Guilty Bystander with a drop of one. It's another hex arm on a track doing a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the idea that a hex arm grabs the quint is nice. Right, yeah. And it's able to use that same duplication glyph by doing this sort of uh, move on the track and then pivot thing. Does use two calcifiers though. Now another relatively small drop of three to two lar. Relatively. <laughs> if you're speaking relatively, that's a larger drop. <laughs> I've been getting ones. I guess relatively to what? No hex arms here, but a uh, multi bonder. It's able to use these two arms and this one on a track to make all these three bonds cleanly. And do a nice pivot um, here that goes does the um, duplication, calcification, and then output all in one pivot. Yeah, that is a really clean ending. I'm surprised a little bit how efficient using five-ish arms has looked. Yeah. I think I really wanted to avoid getting stuck too expensive, so I didn't look at things over this, but there's just so many clean things you can see when you get to play with more arms. Mm -hmm. Too many arms is like, no, I don't want that. <laughs> Yeah, this one is and like just scrap the idea once there was too many arms. Uh -huh. This one, it's like the ending is really clean, but the uh, beginning just requires all these arms to get everything mm. in place. Kind of sad. Yeah. It's okay. Fast, well, here's our tie at three fifteen as well. Username void. Yo. Oh right, that was twenty first. I should have noticed. That. <laughs> yeah, more in chat. Was twenty second? Figure out what they meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can tell when there's a tie. You can oh, also tell how many people are tied. <laughs> yeah, you can tell how many people are tied as well, yeah. <laughs> exact tie because no secondaries. This one is cool how the air sneaks in zoop, zoop, to be mm -hmm. used as a catalyst. But yeah, note is I can make the top track a triangle for plus five, minus six, uh, plus one, moving the earth and quint deposit spot, left one hex, but I like this better. So yeah, yeah, I guess yet another uh, tied solution. He tied there. himself. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, this one is um, cheaper, but slower than the previous one, which makes sense yeah. given how many fewer arms it has. Now at number 20, we have with a 312. Drop. And the piston returns. But no track, so the piston is not even carrying a ton of expense. Yeah. yeah. This is a 180, yeah, that's pretty cheap. 
And it does the <coughs> duplication quite cleanly just by pulling the uh, molecule around. Cost is almost double cycles, though. Mm hmm. Yeah, because it's got five arms and one of them is a piston. Mm -hmm. Now, a drop of two. Bambi, another fight. Sixteen cycles, hell yeah. Fast solve. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really pretty. I love arm two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it like bonds, uh, calcifies, duplicates, bonds. And it doesn't even have that far to reset. But yeah. <clears throat> And the usage of the arms is pretty good too, it's just a little expensive, I guess. And next up, drop of three. Guess oh, who? I'm oh, top 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, how do you do that? <laughs> it's a, just the space bar. <laughs> you can do that? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Solve is called Naming is Hard. Yeah. I think notes. this is the first time I beat Biggie. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> in, in terms of optimizing for getting tournament points, I really misallocated my time this week. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm still okay. <laughs> I have now beaten almost everyone. But yeah. Maybe, uh, wait, no, I. Of like the 2020, the 2021 tournament, I think I beat everyone now. I, I don't I know spent, if I meant to pick on anything. If I spent all of the time that I spent after day one on some, maybe I would have had like five more tournament points at the end of the result. <laughs> but yeah. This is all I could come up with for some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess maybe not even five because it doesn't fall oh, off so guess that it's quickly. Like for me. But yeah, and this one's like barely balanced by the uh, factor of two criterion, where it's like 91 versus 180. Well, I guess I got a lot of pivoting, but you won't, I don't know if they're really sick. Hmm. Okay, now we have another uh, small drop of two to Winter Ray. Uh, note is first attempt, haven't played OM for a while. The new solution submit system looks really neat. Oh, uh, thanks. It is. The site is awesome, Panic. Yeah. I That was made, I guess, kind of for last year's tourney, basically. Yeah. And, and also for... Panic and like, hey, so could we build a website for, <laughs> you know, submitting things? Because that would be really convenient. And I don't have the skills to do that, but I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and also there was, like, some discussion of using the... Unfortunately, you won't be able to participate in tournaments, but... <laughs> For the better of the community, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, it's also I don't know. I I have more fun not having the pressure of trying to make good solves. So win-win yeah, like ultimately. But yeah. Oh, thanks, Fiesta. <laughs> Yeah, as for this uh, solve, it's got three arms. Nice hex arm. Need a pile up soon. It's got a piston, though. Yeah. And, uh. Yeah, what, so what is the piston doing? It's accessing the quintessence and. And, yeah. The earth. And here. also pushing another quintessence all yeah. the way over to that water. So it's doing a decent amount of stuff, but. Could it really uh, not be replaced by an arm on a track or something? Not sure. Everybody's like, <laughs> need, need a pile, pile, pile up soon. Okay, well, Same. <laughs> down to 303. There's. Uh, give me more. <laughs> give, me what, give me differences of one. There's another long note here. I'll sort of uh, go over it, uh, skim it, I guess. This is my fourth real design iteration. Um, design number two found arm four. 
Design number three was a track loop of all three different length arms handling the dispersion. Um, to, to, to get to my current design, I essentially just use trial and error and bash my head against the wall playing around with dispersal location, since that cliff sucks ass. My initial solves were all more uh. fast and expensive. I could not get slow and cheap to work at all, due to how clunky the dispersal glyph was for me. Um, yeah, I would guess that the winner would be around 290 some. I certainly can't see it getting lower than 280 unless I've missed some secret sauce. Three arm on a track loop, that's quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. Zorflax had 303 that was 30 cheaper than this. Oh. Wow. I forgot my, I forgot my costume was just open up to event Dr. Kelly. <laughs> Wait, it's not gonna show. I guess it's gonna show up in the other metric. One forty G. Uh... <clears throat> it definitely seems Almost like this. Than that. This puzzle uh, emphasized being cheap, just because the required glyphs are already so expensive. Yeah. Now we have a huge drop of five to not great. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so this looks so horrible with the final arm that does nothing, but one duplication in outputs, but I can't find anything better. That's fair. Yeah, fair. Oh, that arm, that last arm, yeah, it's unfortunate. Sub 300. Yes, this is pilot, the first. Pilot, 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 pilot. Sub 300 pilot. at number 15. <laughs> that is amazing to me. Mm. <laughs> uh, now we have a drop <laughs> of one. John John was right. <laughs> this feels like too much track. It feels like mm, five, it's six tracks. Yeah, only three arms though. So 150G is a pretty decent cost. The movement is really clean, though. I love the pivot around that air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's arm two is able to just keep grabbing it and moving it around without having to re-grab until uh, mm -hmm. the end there. And this sort of um, diamond-shaped track lets you access everything on the dispersion glyph and the quintessence. First so. sum I submitted. Oh, the first sum I submitted is better than this. Hmm. Not by much, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people saying 280. Very interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then next up, we have a drop of one. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Goodbye, Galaxy. I think of my galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, achievement unlocked. Beat Goodbye Galaxy at a sum puzzle. Oh, this is really fast. I'm surprised that 190 can get you in the. That's that uh, overpowered hex arm. And the underpowered arm three. Yeah, it's just doing one thing. Ah, uh. <laughs> You're gonna have an underpowered arm make the tape loop short so that it doesn't have as much idle time. <laughs> yeah, but then you have to spend more money on arms to make it shorter. Mm -hmm. Unless you can just pick up the instruction and squish them a little. Yeah. This one also has three bonders, interestingly. I agree with spiritual shampoo. Keep dropping one, please. I want top ten. <laughs> yeah. Well, congrats. We have another drop by one. Yo. Pizzazz. Uh, note is I spent way too much time programming this layout for the end result to be so simple, but at least I feel like I'm learning. It's, uh... That's the thing with some. Yeah. Good sums don't look difficult. <laughs> yeah, you spend a lot of time and you end up with something that looks really, maybe even obvious, but. Yeah, some solves are just like very elegant and simple. 
So yeah, I would say you uh, you get the idea of some pretty well. This one is more expensive than the last few we've seen, I think, but makes up oh, yeah, for it with the fast construction. And it's actually kind of similar to the previous solve in some ways. It has this arm one that's delivering a quint to the top track loop and the dispersion. And then mm -hmm. uh, this arm four that's doing this sort of calcification duplication dance. Another drop of one to uh, playtest solve from Haxton. Oh, it's not even scope. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, I, oh I recognize I that. that. I recognize the pentagon track with two, three and two length. <laughs> I really like swinging the earth onto the quint so that you can reach the bonder that's behind the end. I, I recognize that track and arm configuration, not from this puzzle. <laughs> oh yeah, that's very cool. The Biggie just pointed out this uh, suppression tech where you're swinging onto the input so it doesn't spawn, so you can yeah. move over it. That's a very familiar arm layout from uh, Vaporized Propellant. Mm -hmm. Vaporized Propellant is also a dispersion puzzle, with, but with triplexed stabilized air. I really didn't take Zorflax's advice and study Vaporized Propellant. <laughs> and... Also at 294. It really was a drop of one. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's Caluresis. Top 10! <laughs> <laughs> it's probably all I'm getting though. What's RPO's name for submitting? Just uh, letters RP and RP0. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess this awesome. one... I have a feeling I'm next. <laughs> this one uses this arm 2, sort of replaces the uh, hex arm that we would see there, but there's another hex arm on the left side. And another drop of one. <laughs> Hell yeah, <laughs> not me. <laughs> spec 98. This one has oh, the quint at a length of two, which helps swing the quint onto like some actual thing that's Ooh. not just on top of the yeah. dispersion. Mm -hmm. But arm two still has to adjust it. Oh. Yeah, it has to do the little <laughs> dance. It's surprised this is two ninety three though. It's quite cheap, only one hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. One hundred fifty is expensive to me. You'll see; it's probably coming up. And indeed, at number nine. Here we are. One legged Sorry, horsey correct. goes galloping. Go to <laughs> Look at nice those horsey gallop. Wiggle, yeah. Arm three is really busy. I love this. So uh, arm one moves the input out of the way, so I can do that last rotate <laughs> mm -hmm. while it loops. Right, yeah, it, it suppresses the input. That's the most significant part of the solution. Yeah, the note is uh, heavily inspired by vaporized propellant sum, cool suppression tap used on loop. Uh, smiley face with tongue sticking out. <laughs> pivot, this is pivot of the week. <laughs> it's not even that impressive, it's just wiggles. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really cool solve. Good job on top 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Congrats. <laughs> and yeah, congrats to Spect as now well. I'm excited to see what else is better. How low does it go? We shall see. Another drop of one. Ebonov. Mm -hmm. uh, Ebonov. Ooh. <laughs> Ebonov's good at some, yeah. Uh, comment is division of labor is artificial in the sense that at the beginning of this iteration, it's decided that arm three will do the two quint moves and one cardinal move. Arm one wanted to take up more work, but turns out the other arm is a better grab point. This iteration came down from two arm locales, and this locale feels less explored. Shaving any of one R, a track, or a few swing areas seems possible. 
Curtilli plus the silhouette is a mirror symmetric or is mirror symmetric about the line of five to eleven o'clock. Oh. Classific classification still mostly takes care of itself. Yeah, and it does. I was thinking what would beat me, and that would be uh, calcifying before bonding, mm -hmm. or while bonding. And yeah, this does that. I couldn't get that to work smoothly though. Yeah, it's nice when you can have multiple arms on a track like this that are um, both using it actively. Able to share the work. Arms on the same track is very OP. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Especially this... when it comes. To... Yeah, I find when it comes to dispersion, arms on the same track is about as powerful as hex arms, maybe even more so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they can do other things too in a lot of cases. Yeah. But yeah, this one managed to be 107 cycles at 150 cost, which is uh, quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have another drop of one to Newchar. Slightly more expensive and slightly faster. I tried faster. to save like six sum by reducing the loop, but never got it to work. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that would have been a lot. This one is doing a suppression thing like we saw earlier for the last... Mm-hmm air in that. Oh yeah, chain. that's pretty useful. Yeah, getting it through the input to the bonder that's on the other side. That's that's necessary, I guess, when you have the six arm spin on the bonder with Quint going first. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, and the two arm is really cool too. <laughs> And that's the the arm that's limiting the repeat cycle, so it kind of has to be a two arm to avoid reset that would slow it down. Mm -hmm. I had the same issue, but I found out that extending the tape loop was a reduction of ten, but only lost six cycles. Mm -hmm. Right, but this one it has to it would have to move three to reset, so that's. Uh... Yes. Oh, yeah. Since my ending position was only one off from the input. Mm -hmm. And next up, a drop of two. Rebix. 280. 288. We're sub 290. We're in the 280 range. Multicolor color Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's... Yeah, this one here, let's watch it from the beginning again. So, yeah, it makes. Oh, that's why it's called multicolor hair product. <laughs> yeah, it makes this uh, thing here, this multicolor hair product. Yeah, a catalyst. And then uses that instead of a burlo. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Yeah, I thought Catalyst would be a good idea when, when I saw it, saw it on a earlier saw. And it even loops. Very nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, someone noticed uh, there's a tie. <clears throat> Also at number five, Pentapig. Who is it? Pentapig, nice. Five arms, but only 170 nice gold. Arm. Yeah. Mm. It's a They're very... all single arms and only two track. And it's very fast. It's only uh, 85 cycles. Wow, Pentapig did use five arms. I don't think anything has ever re grabbed. Arm four hands off from things to one. Oh yeah 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 arm one has to hand off like that cool but yeah arm three just does a pivot and then arm two pivots and then arm five pivots it's very interesting arm one is quite interesting because it doesn't really directly grab from anywhere it's just getting things that are handed off to it by arm four Mm -hmm. Pentabig says the Ooh, yeah. the error takes like arm four is reaching two places. Arm one would be difficult to right. That would be difficult for arm one to reach. So might as well not use a track for arm one mm -hmm. and just have arm four do double the work. I guess it's kind of like having a piston, but each half can operate independently, so it's faster. Mm -hmm. Arm two pivot is pretty slick. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it will be 
better if arm three were to handle the air and arm one was on the track so we won't have arm four. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Now we have a drop of six. Holy oh, shit. Big drop. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Spiritual shampoo. Spiritual shampoo is in shambles after having a <laughs> Well, oh, top three. Yeah, congrats. We got, we got another tie. <laughs> congrats on third place. Congratulations, your top three. Yeah. So yeah, this one uh, uses a hex arm and two other arms, one of which is on a track. 140, 110, that's really slick. Mm-hmm. Calling. Very fast for three arms, especially with uh, such few, such a uh, small amount of track. I find 32 area popping up a lot. I like how arm one enables the hex arm to pivot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, this, this solve has a very nice division of labor. Yeah. Although it's very, it, yeah, it's very, very even. Because arm three is moving this air, it's moving this fire, and then it's also moving to the output. Whereas arm one is delivering the quint to two places and also doing the pivot. And arm two is obviously doing a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think Fiesta's absolutely leading the tournament after this week. Yeah. Yeah. But Fiesta has a Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so, yeah, next up. Also at 282, Mr. Puzzle. Not Fiesta. Fiesta and I think Nova Yo-Yo. Mm. Did Nova Yo-Yo submit for some? Or Yo-Yo Nova. Yo-Yo Nova. But yeah. It's Nova and Fiesta left. Okay. We definitely have to... But also, this solved by Mr. Puzzle, 155 gets you to 282. This is still kind of on the expensive side, but not so much so that it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all these pivots are being made by oh, yeah. something that's already grabbing the atom. So arm one pivots, and then arm two bonds to it, and then starts pivoting. Morikonda mentioned that we have a new winner. Oh, yeah. Either way, it's going to be new. Either way, it's a new winner. Yeah. Making the half flare first. Yeah, 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 because you can pivot puts, around. It puts the air in the location that a like, C cycle would put it. Hmm. Where it is connected to both left and right salts, which means you can pivot twice, but that's uh -huh. kind of area hungry to do. Right. But it does come out to 32 area, which I guess is the popular area. <laughs> There's days. a lot of 32 area. <laughs> mine, mine was 32 area. <laughs> 32 area just seems to be the converging point for area. Yes, that is indeed yeah, a track shape. shape. All right. <laughs> it could be a disjoint. I think there's never <laughs> any connection between uh, the horizontal segment. Oh, yeah, there can be. Yeah. All right, now a drop of looks like <laughs> two. So congrats two, to uh, Mr. Puzzle as well for third place. Black Pivot Magic, who is it? It's Nova. Nova, second place. It says, I performed a demonic ritual and accidentally summoned Arm 4. We're breaking the tradition mm -hmm. of cost has to be in the same ballpark as Psych. Yeah, was. this is, this is <laughs> not <laughs> balanced. <laughs> It's using the to-be-built product to finish the duplication. Oh, no, it's not. It's duplicating off of itself. I yeah. misjudged. But it does have My, to dodge that rotating uh, intermediate product to do so. Yeah, surprisingly expensive, 180. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's four arms and a decent amount of track. But somehow it's able to complete in 67 mm -hmm. cycles. Yeah. Because... I think, 33 area. let's see, arm two grabs two of the things off of the dispersion, but everything else gets grabbed by a separate arm. And then arm three is then free to pivot 
And then arm four goes back and uh What this does pretty well though is both all the track uh all the instruction tapes are pretty full. Uh-huh. That's another important part about some. And this one does that well. Yeah. Wanna scroll to the right a bit to see if there's any more empty space? It does do a different uh timing on the last output. Oh, it's it pretty full all the way through. Mm -hmm. The last output uh doesn't wait to do the pivot because it doesn't have to wait for a second output. Uh, a second. Well, it's six. It's six p, I assume. Yeah. I am catching up with the turns. <laughs> Arm one is doing so much work in this. It's really good. Yeah, it delivers the dispersion, pulls the air. Oh, I must. I misread. That must be arm three. Mm. I was looking at arm three when I said it, but the pixels weren't right. I see. That makes more sense. Yeah, it's <laughs> pulling the fire. Oh, bonding, pivoting. Doesn't help. It's on the same track loop as arm two. Calcifying two things. I also. <laughs> yeah. I also saw that arm. But also, you can you can just say any individual arm here is doing so much work. Yeah, and they're all doing a lot. <laughs> yeah, they're all doing like two or three Arguing things. The one that's doing the least is arm four. Yeah, but it still is doing a pivot. But even that is doing that dupe. Yeah, it bonds, dupes, pivots. Oh, excuse me. Arm four is doing the uh, motion of atoms while arm one is on the track. That was what overclocking revealed is actually an illegal movement. Oh. Banned. Oh, oh. <laughs> interesting. It's probably fine with the new uh, like spacing yeah, of rotations yeah. right the like power of two thing yeah. maybe if i was using the modded version it would have crashed or something no it's actually it's like it's always missed unless you have a um, huge swing oh I see, I, see, I see or it's just the huge swing check that does it i think so i see i see but yeah very cool congrats on number two yo yo nova and in first place, Fiesta, congrats on your first win. Congratulations. The aspect of this I solve <laughs> I'm happy about, or happiest about, is that it uses only seven grabs to complete the product. Only two regrabs total. That feels like good efficiency, especially since it also uses min glyphs. And yes, sub 280. So people who are talking about 280 the... were very. Uh, on Zorfox point. Zorfox intuition is powerful, even if the perfectionism <laughs> prevents it. Yeah. Them. Yeah. And I guess people talking about how some doesn't have a goal. I I, I guess um, eventually you get to the point where you do have a goal. The goal is make it as simple and as reduced as possible. Mm -hmm. This one, this one does that. You look at this and go like, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and very good division of labor. Arm one delivers the quint and does that pivot that allows arm three to um, actually pivot, even though it's a hex arm. And it reuses the calcifier with that pivot. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that final pivot that arm two is doing. That's very nice. And yeah, arm two needs that track to access those um, fire and air. But then it can also so do that final pivot. Surprise first, surprise first place as a hex arm. I mean, it makes such good use of it because it's able to, with that pivot from arm one, the hex arm can yeah. become like more useful by being able to pivot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the downside of hex arms is no pivots. But if you could get that to work, well, you got a winning song. And yeah, I guess this uh, restores the balance at 140 and 105. I mean, technically, arm one is doing the pivoting, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but then arm three does a pivot uh, after that. Arm three needs to do a regrab, though. Right, right, right. Unless you pivot glitch it. Oh, wait, no, because it's grabbing the other ones as well. Yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's it's just invalid. It's grabbing the uh, earth and water. Mm -hmm. But yeah, very very clean solve. Congratulations. Now let's move on to the showcases, I suppose. Uh -huh. There How were not showcases do we have? too many this week. I think people were very uh, preoccupied with lexicographic <laughs> cycles. Occupied with the main <laughs> metrics, yeah. yeah. There might be a lot next week mm -hmm. since uh, you, pre re you reach like the limits of height pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Speaking of height. Speaking of height. <laughs> first solve is a height solve. By, By spiritual, spiritual shampoo, shampoo mm -hmm. no less. Says check out arm 14. Oh, look at that. Resolution too low on Discord for me to see arm 14. <laughs> it's doing that same pivot that we saw in some of the, um, I think, lexicographic cycle solves or some solves. I forget which ones, but where it's moving, moving on a track through a uh, this molecule shape that's pivoting around it. Uh -huh. Maybe it's hard to see. I'm excited to see like how it. the... I'm excited to see how all the new height mains would do with the new puzzle. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and some kind of bricking going on here. Making these little... Yo. Shapes, which are then turned into the right colors and then get bonded into the right final shape and pivoted. People solving for a week too, pick up on some clues, hints, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tips and hints. <laughs> <laughs> it's often useful to make this sort of river of things that goes along in height solves. But it may or may not be useful for week two. High throughput. Right. Next up. I've made a bunch of bricky height solves before that have then been beaten by things that don't move as high throughput. Mm -hmm. Nothing is a set rule, but you know, there's general. I <laughs> have this very interesting trade off of throughput versus latency that's really difficult to get it right. Yeah. Right. Especially because it's you can pay so much to get that high throughput with like complicated mechanisms and like huge long rivers and such. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have the Irrational Solve from Irrational Guy. I believe this is <laughs> the same uh, fundamental technique as the as uh, Bambi's uh, original Irrational Solve. And... Oh, the stick just keeps on increasing in length. Yeah. This is just a clone of the hair product Irrational Solve because it uses the same glyph, except for whenever it outputs, it actually makes an output. Oh, uh, yeah. Because uh, it uh, takes yeah. two points to make an output, so checking to see if you have a full uh, face powder is the same. Right. And then, yeah, it does conditional logic. If it is able to grab this pair, then it disperses it and bonds the last quint. So, yeah, go uh, check out Biggie's blog post on this if you're curious how this works. Which one is it? The titration one? Uh, it's something irrationally. Is there a... Here, let me let me Just look it up. Rations. Go to biggieblog.com to check out Biggie's post. You can read about things such as Conway's Game of Life or previous Opus Lack improvements. There, I put it in the chat. And math. <laughs> Okay, next up is, uh, oh yeah, we already looked at this one. This is the 9-2. Oh yeah. Except with yeah. one overlap. The overlap cheat. <laughs> overlap geometry treat. Let's uh, go on to the next one, I guess. This is from 42 Genius 42. I think this is his... Modding Rooster. Um, Lex 10-4. Yeah. This was going to be my submitted Lexi until three hours before the deadline. Uh, it's uh, much more elegant than the clunky, clunky latency nine that uh, he submitted. So, how many of you submit last minute instead of submitting throughout the week? I would always do like absolute last minute submissions. 
I like submitting throughout the week. <laughs> Any tournament host that I've competed in can verify. I submit whatever my <laughs> best is whenever I close the game, but I don't close the game many times because it stays on overnight. That makes sense. <laughs> I just, whenever I make an improvement, I go like, that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> like, when before we had the website, like when Brookie was hosting, he, I was one of the top people. The, one of the people with the most submissions. I think uh, Chickens in the Attic beat me there. Hmm. On most submissions. So this is Theory Min Lexicographic Width? Lex W. <laughs> Not sure exactly what that means. Maybe like Lexicographic Lex cycle. W is just staying on the same, <laughs> same width. Is it, does, does that just mean width? But Yes, it's just that's the exact same width for every <laughs> three brackets. Yeah. <laughs> sure. It's just a fancy way of saying width. <laughs> Next W. Only W is in this house. <laughs> Look at the absolute size of this W. Long. Width is always a very strange metric. I don't understand it. Yeah. It's weird to think about. Because you don't usually build like chains that are zigzag shaped if you're not used to width. Right. And there's all this that's like the alternating. Old, that's basically, they're all. Yeah, there's like this alternating pattern where you like have these little choke points that you have to pass things through. Especially with two. Yeah, this is with three. Clearly, we need all the rows to have the same width, but perhaps at different offsets. Anyways, next up, Moriconda. Wait, did Moriconda say something in chat about? Oh, skip over Lexi showcase. It's far surpassed. Okay, sure. Uh, Next up is, hold on, OA. Did anybody make a cycle song? I didn't. I was going to, and I decided to not. Yeah. Oh, that's too much effort on the two six nine two six. Yep, I was uh, taken by the effort to make the perfect solution. Taken hostage by 926. <laughs> so yeah, this is overlap area. A cycle solve on this would be interesting though. Interestingly horrendous, but you know. <laughs> I guess this is min. Seems like it. Yeah. I don't see, yeah, I don't see how you can overlap it otherwise. Uh -huh. Maybe with uh, one less. This is a GC solve, your rabbit. I have faster just GC you're just showing no disposal. Version. Me. Why wouldn't it use disposal? I I don't know. That's what you do in Year of the Rabbit, I guess. Bunnies just multiply. <laughs> Won't dispose of them. <laughs> Chat asking if overlap rate would be interesting for this. I am unsure. In theory, you could output just... using a quint and then have the second quint proc the dispersion glyph, which is horrifying. Uh, you'd have to output in the second it's half cycle, though. Again. Because it only consumes in the first half cycle. Correct. It would be it would be a uh, debond output like with a wand. Mm. So you output after again. moving with a wand, consume the just created quint, and then the second quint in the first half cycle of the following cycle will go into dispersal. But how the hell do you use that quint as often as it needs to be to even get that to be useful? Uh huh. Would unification have a use? 
I don't think so. No. I think you would basically end up having to extrude a huge line of quint and then use dozens of dispersion glyphs to make a factory that procs the dispersion quickly enough on an output. Yeah. Like it'd, be, it'd be invisible ink, but scaled up by a factor of maybe five. It's mm -hmm. ugly. Yeah. <laughs> and that was already pretty um, uh, like There was a blog uh, post about invisible ink, yeah. Yeah, that was the one where I was like, I've made something complicated. Yeah, like that. I want my Let's go link that as well. <laughs> Might as well. Let me go look it up. Biggie block. I can't type Biggie. <laughs> and that was just playing Opus Magnum by different rules, because it was also my first post. So I wanted to make uh -huh. it friendlier and not just start out with, here's uh, a monster, look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here's another GCA by Mr. Puzzle. Control C. I assume this one uses disposal. Control yeah. V. Here you go. Biggie block playing Opus Magnum by different roles. Hey, look, you can use disposal. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Is this better, GC? Yeah. Yeah, it's exciting. So, Communist Mountains did say that uh, they had faster GC, but. It was just a no disposal showcase for some reason. Oh, uh, okay. If disposal did not exist. Mm -hmm. If there was a no disposal. What a puzzle. world. <laughs> I mean, I guess adding disposal to this puzzle wasn't strictly necessary. Like, Lexi and some don't really use it. But... Uh, yeah, I was wondering why you included it, but then you talked about how you can uh, use a catalyst and I assume, that, yeah, you can dispose of the rest then. Yeah, I think. Maybe, maybe that's why I put it in. I don't know. It's not optimal, but it's an option. Right. And I think this is the last one, yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Well, thanks to everyone who submitted for week one. Oh, no tribonder in week um, zero? Um, yeah, there was no tribonder in week zero. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, why, why would you want to? I, I don't know. <laughs> Why would you want to try water? But you know, I, I don't remember I guess, much about the, just usually... the design process of week zero. To be honest, or like what, which things were clicked <laughs> for week zero. Like, oh yeah, you want to talk a bit about week two? Yeah, yeah, I was going to do that. So yeah, the week two puzzle was announced on Friday. Uh, so some of you have Waste probably reclamation. already been working on it. It's called waste reclamation, and there's two metrics once again. Um, First one is trackless instructions. So the idea of that is that your solution can't use any track because if you can use track, there's ways of making very low instruction solutions sort of mechanically by making a big track loop and then you grab and move it along all of the different glyphs you need. Uh, so no track is allowed for that one. And then the... You can usually do it in three or four if it's just if you get track. Uh -huh. And then... So discussing whether it's three or four is probably not good right now, but <laughs> I mean, whatever. Since it's an ongoing puzzle. But yeah, so like the way that instructions are counted is the same as they're counted for production puzzles. So it's as expanded. This is nine instructions, um, even though there's only uh, six instructions that were replaced. And obviously you can't use a track, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a silly example, but you know. Uh, and then ties are by, broken by area and then cost for that one. And then the second metric is height. So we saw height solve um, pretty uh, recently. So height is just the number of rows of the solution that are occupied. So like right now, this is a three height solution because this row, this row, this row are filled up. Um, if this arm were to do a swing like this, then now it's height four because there's this extra row that gets taken up during the swing. Graphix is mentioning how one day real free space instructions will be in the tournament. Maybe we already have a height. We already have like a height saw, a height metric right now. Yeah, maybe with a it's not out of the question. Yeah, with a because puzzle uh, designed for it. No it more rank, no more metric points. Oh yeah, the forbidden length two swing. Probably do that just Ooh, as a yeah. public Watch service announcement here. Um, Whenever you submit, <laughs> let Panic's site tell you yeah. what your solution yeah. for is. <laughs> and yeah, it pay attention to the number. It's a lot easier to see and, the uh, number and know that that's the correct number than it is to guess and think you did something and that might be wrong. 
absolutely. Yeah, and this swing in particular can be tricky because it doesn't, maybe you don't think it's going to go out, it's going to make these uh, hexes fill, but it does. And now your solution is height four when you thought it might be three. And it's really sad to learn about that on the results stream when it's like, oh, I'm in the fours section. I thought I was in the three section. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Puzzle is plugging the uh, whatever that stands for. Mod. <laughs> Finally, this setup, Finally is... this setup is getting close to usable. Yes, there we yeah. go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, that is week two. And those will be due a uh, week from now, or a week from a couple hours ago. A week from now, yeah. Yeah. A week, well, two hours earlier, but two or three hours earlier, but yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, um, thanks everyone for joining me in the stream and for your submissions. Yeah. Some very cool stuff. Congrats to everyone, and see you next week, same time, same place. Yep. Glad to be part of the tournament. Glad to be competing in the tournament again. Probably my last year, but... <laughs> yeah. Excited. Yeah, and uh, yeah, thanks to Biss and Biggie for being on commentary as well. Yeah. See you guys next time. See you next week.